recorded live. All right, welcome to another episode of the Movement Boxing Podcast. Uh, you know, as usual, we got another good week of topics for you. Um, big fight card this weekend. Um, you know, uh, I'm joined by my co-host again on this show. We got TK the guy joining us again this week from the guys of Boxing Talk. You know, even if he wasn't available last week, had some other things to happen. Glad to have you back on this week, TK. Uh, what up? with your fam? Doing good, fam. All right. Uh, and also, fellow co-host from the Truth and Facts About Boxing, we got both Bo and Bernard. Uh, how y'all doing today, fellas? I'm blessed. All right. All right, that's what's up, man. Uh, looking forward to uh, – I know Bernard going to be out there this weekend for the, the Ward and Kovalev fight as well, so looking forward to, to meet with my brethren from the movement. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and, sir. Uh, checking that fight out, man. A lot of good fights this weekend. Uh, probably one of the most highly anticipated fights of the year. Pay-per-view showdown, as we all know. Uh, pay-per-view showdown between uh, Ferrier Kovalev and Andre Ward. Uh, light heavyweight belt. Man, you know, what more can we say? It's been been brewing for for a brief one, man. Uh, with that said, we're going we gonna to pop off into this week's list of topics, uh, starting off with the review of last fight weekend's uh, cards. We had two of them. Uh, one being in the U.S. and the other was in the U.K. So we'll go ahead and start off with the U.S. one. Um, you know, no favoritism or nothing like that. You know, just going going in the, the order that we already had, basically. So um, with that said, uh, we're going to start off with the Danny Garcia versus Sammy Vargas card. Um, we had quite a few uh, fights on that one. Three specifically that we're really going to uh, cover on the show. So, um Start with that said, let's start off with the first fight of the, the evening. Uh the Jared Hurd fight versus uh Jojo Dan, uh at Super Welterweight. Um we going I'm gonna send it off to TK or our fight break there on our analyst, you know what I'm saying? Let him do what he do, man. Uh what'd you see of the fight? What'd you think of it, man? Uh your thoughts on uh Swift Hurd? Well, I mean Swift Heard is sick, man. I've been saying it for a long time. He looked just like my man Tavon. You know what I'm saying? He probably is long lost brother or some shit. But uh, <laughs> I, I mess with him. I mess with him a lot about that, man. He looked just like that cat, bro. <laughs> and they both from Baltimore too. So, but uh, uh, yeah, man. He he's a very good fighter. I think he's the silent sheep or silent lamb at 154. Um. He's a, a prospect in that division, obviously, but a lot of people are talking more about Erickson Lubin, and rightfully so. Erickson Lubin is an excellent talent, but Jared Hurd is really being slept on. Like, I've asked people about, um, you know, people closest in my circle about Jared Hurd, and they don't know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Excellent, excellent uh, uh, a fighter. Very fast hands. Uh, uh, good combination puncher. He's defensively sound. Um, Jojo Dan, this was too much for him, and Jojo Dan said it himself. Like, you know, I came into the ring with confidence, but uh, Jared Hurd was just too big and he was just too much. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Jojo Dan uh, also fought Kell Brook. Yes, and he, he did, didn't yeah. hold He didn't hold Kell Brook to such high regard as he held Jared Hurd after that fight. Now, of course, uh, Jojo Dan is from 147. So he moved up to fight before this uh, when he fought, I believe, uh, uh, Rafael Djokovic, uh, a guy at 154, a good fighter at or a, a journeyman at 154, and then he fought Jared Hurd. So granted, he's moving up in weight, so that's probably why he said what he said, but at the same time, you know, skills pay the bills and real recognize real, and Jared Hurd is a real deal. Not too much of a fight breakdown, man. It's just he went in there and did what he needed to do to win, man. Like, he's He's that much of a high-class talent, and I can't wait to see him against uh, one of the elite guys, or at least a contender at 154, maybe, you know, Austin Trout or somebody, uh, Willie Nelson, Ivana Esmond Erosion, somebody with a name 
uh, that I can actually challenge uh, Jared Hurd. That would be good. I, I would love to see him against Erickson Lubin, but you know that shit wouldn't happen right now. But, yeah, man, uh, a guy that really needs to be on everybody's radar right now is a prospect. All right, I definitely agree that, uh, you know, that was a great performance from him. You know, I seen saw a lot more from Swift in this fight, you know, even compared to Oscar Molina when I saw him live, um, you know, earlier in the summer on, uh, I believe it was the Keith Thurman card that he was on earlier this year. Um, right. Fighting a much smaller guy in JoJo Dan, like you said, coming up for 147, but, you know, he's been in there with some real game guys. You know, Kel Brook more specifically. So he was a game opponent, you know, moving up in weight. I was happy to see that Swift didn't give up his height, you know, uh, like he did against Molina. So I was, I was pretty impressed with, with him in this fight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Bo on this one and get his take on this man. Uh, what were your thoughts on uh, on this fight between Swift Hurd and JoJo Dan and, you know, his thoughts, your thoughts about him going on in uh, the future at 154? Uh. Uh, you, you thought, you know, JoJo Don. That's 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 it. He fought JoJo Don. That's like, <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? I mean, JoJo Don. Like, really? We're gonna get excited about him looking kind of like sloppy with not throwing his jab, not moving his head, coming forward, using no technique because he knew he could take this guy out. So, I wasn't impressed at all with Jared Hurd. I don't, I, I don't see what the big deal about him is. So. But, yeah, it was JoJo Don, and moving forward to 154, Laura going to waste this guy. Laura going to get rid of this guy. We're never going to hear from this punk again. But on the most serious note, are, 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 are you, are you starting on, on, the, on the Cuba shit already? <laughs> are, 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 you, are you starting, <laughs> are you starting <laughs> on the today, man? No, Damn. on a serious note, on a serious note, on a more serious note, no, I liked everything I saw in, in that fight. I, I was concerned with the fact that the only thing that bothered me was since he knew that JoJo Don couldn't hurt him or had nothing for him. He did stop, like, you know, setting things up with his jab and just started kind of coming forward. That was the only thing that concerned me. But, I mean, I mean, I mean, dude, you got to give him credit. He looked it good against him. He uh, he was just, I mean, he's the real deal. Um, and like 2K said, JoJo Don even had said, and remember this is 154, and JoJo Don was like, you know, that, you know, Kel Brooks couldn't even do that, that, that give him that kind of work. And you can, you can see, you can see the upside to my man Jared Hurd. You know, uh, when he was setting punches up, they were nice. When he was moving, they were nice. Like, there was a moment in the fight where, you know, Don was scared to let his hands go because of what was coming back at him over the counters. So, man, you know, good fight, you know, uh, going forward in 154-pound division. I would like to actually see him in there with, like, um, like I would like to see him with, like, a, a Hatley or a Monterosian, um, Ishe Smith, maybe even Austin Trout, Harrison, you know, one of them, one of them kind, you know, one of them kind of guys. And I, I actually think, like some of them dudes I named, he, he, he did them guys some problem because the boy is, he has a great upside, he has skill, he has stamina, and he has a frame of mind where I don't really see him getting like. I haven't seen him in a position where it looks like, you know, even when JoJo Dine was able to land some punches, it didn't deter him. So I like what I'm seeing out of him, you know, and moving forward, I think he can definitely make some noise at the division that's starting to become kind of hot right now, which is one hundred fifty four pound division. Yeah. Uh, he's a definitely young and exciting prospect. Uh, he brings a crowd with him. Uh, you know, like I said, I've seen him before earlier this summer. Um, he definitely brings a nice crowd. Um, Nice prospect up and coming, man. I, I definitely look forward to him. I agree with 2K on some of the things he said as far as uh, him and Erickson moving in the future. Probably going to be a will be a real good matchup. Those are they're really probably two. Uh, as far as the prospect level, they're probably the two highly most touted at 154 at the moment. Um, I wouldn't really consider J Rock a prospect. You know, he is already a contender, so that's why I said that. Um, let me pass it over to Bernard, man. Let me get your take on Swift Heard, man. What was your thoughts on him and, uh, you know, what, what he could do in the 154-pound division based on what you've seen on him? Yeah, I am becoming a fan of uh, Jerry Swift Heard. I like what he did. I told you that he did need to use his height and uh, use that jab more. Didn't want to, 
he didn't have to fight on the inside, but when he did, he he, he gave JoJo Dan that work. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about it is him being on the ropes. He, he shouldn't even, because he knew he was, how would you say, like both said, JoJo Dan didn't really present a, a, a major problem for him. He should never even, his back should never even touch the ropes. He just kept that fight in the middle and put JoJo Dan to the ropes and finished them off. But he did what he had to do. Uh, used his um jab, used his height, used his um, used his strength and power in on the inside, and did what he had to do to get the um the TKO. All right, uh, let's take it into another car, probably the the most exciting of the night. Uh, um, we had Javier Fortuna uh taking on Omar Douglas, the undefeated at the time. Um. And another attraction on the card uh, at lightweight, popular for Tuma. You know, he got dropped again in this fight. Uh, you know, came back and, you know, got UD victory against Douglas. Uh, let me take you back to my man 2K. What did you see in this fight for Fortuna? Uh, yeah, we've been quite critical of him at times on this show, man. So I'm definitely going to let you yeah. lay the wood on this one. Yeah, you know, I, I told you guys before that I like. Javier Fortuna when he was an ESPN fighter, and I think I mentioned this uh, before um, on one of my my videos on my channel. Since moving off of ESPN, man, like he he hasn't been the same dude to me, um, or maybe just his, his competition um, has gotten better, um, and his skills uh, that he portrayed against the competition on ESPN and did not. Uh, come together against better opposition. That's possibly that's probably what the problem was. Um, but in this fight, man, I <laughs> I saw the same problems I saw against um, um, gee Sosa. Forgot his first name. Uh, Jason. Help me out. Yeah, Jason Sosa. Jason Sosa. Uh, yeah, I had a had a brain fart for a second. Jason Sosa. I was talking about him all day yesterday too. Anyway, but uh, what I saw against him, I saw the same thing against Douglas. I mean, he's he's open. I mean, he's ripe for counters. He's, I mean, he, I mean, he, he's, he's defensively unsound. Let me just put it that way. Um, and Douglas, I mean, he came to fight. I mean, he was a guy that was pretty much counted out before the fight because not too many people knew who he was. And he came in there and gave him a good fight. I had this fight very close. Um, I didn't have yeah. Javier Fortuna. Yeah, I didn't have Fortuna actually uh, 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 dusting Douglas by any means. Um, the jab was prevalent. I've seen there's no, it's another thing that I noticed. Javier Fortuna will be right for the jab. Um, <laughs> I mean, he was talking about getting a rematch with Jason Sosa. The way Jason Sosa has been looking recently, uh, his win over, you know, Stephen Smith this past weekend as well, I wouldn't recommend that as of now. Um, if Javier Fortuna has an opportunity to get better, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's, he's 27 years old. He's still young. Uh, he needs to hone on his fucking defense, man. And he needs to hone uh, on his vulnerability as a fighter um, in order to basically get that get back, like my man Bo likes to say, against a guy like Jason Sosa, who's actually cemented. He's starting to cement himself anyway. Let me just say he's emerging as one of the better fighters at 130 after this past weekend. So, um it's a good win for Javier Fortuna. Like I said, he was dropped early, he got up, and he went ahead and took the victory. But, man, there's a lot of things that he needs to work on, man. A guy like Douglas, he probably should have ran through this guy um, because it really the, the, Douglas is uh, – his skill set is the type of guy that he was fighting on ESPN uh, when he was fighting, like, every fucking Friday. Um, so he should have actually ran through this guy, um, but unfortunately he didn't. So I, I – he's – He's got a lot to work on, man. I I can only say good luck to him. Uh, another uh, good analysis. You know, uh, definitely agree. Or two men is looping punch punches. Uh, I've always, I've never been a fan of that of his. Um, the defense definitely been always been suspect. You know, uh, he's been cut quite a few times in other belts. Um, oh. You know, he was actually doing good against Sosa in their fight until getting knocked out. Um, yeah, he was so, winning the fight, I believe. Yeah, I think he was yeah, winning. He, he was one of the he was one of the fights. So you know, I actually wouldn't put it past him and giving Sosa a good a good fight again and a rematch 
if they came soon, but like you said, Sosa's been improving, but um, I yeah. wouldn't put it past him. It's just that, you know, his defense defense is lacking, his wide yeah. looping and wild punches. I don't know if that's a thing. You know, Dominicans are having a, a habit of doing <laughs> between him and Jezreel Corrales in that division. And, you and know, uh, uh, what's his name? The the cat that uh, uh, Robert Issa Jr. knocked out, Arginas Mendez, I think yeah. he was Dominican as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. I'm guessing that that that's something they do around that weight division. Uh, it's, it's a, I don't know. I guess it's a country a country thing. You know, uh, we don't see it from Felix. We don't see it from Felix Diaz though. So I'm gonna need them to get that shit together. He ain't doing it. But uh, let me go ahead and pass it on back on the bow for this one. Break down this fight. You know what you saw from Fortuna uh, against the undefeated at the time, Omar Douglas. Uh, UD decision. Uh, what were your thoughts, and what did you take away from Fortuna? You know, first I didn't get a chance to say welcome back to that light skinned punk ass dude over there talking right now. I'm glad he's back <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm still, I'm, still, I, I'm still not on that on that phone that you're thinking of. I'm on a different. Nah, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> he talks about that, and trust me, I'm starting to feel you too. Um, you know what? <laughs> you really can't say it no better than what TK said. I was watching that fight, and he went down. I think it was the first round. Uh, Douglas um, put him down. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, I think it was the first round. Now, it was the first the round. Thing, it was. The only thing that I say that I like is okay. This was the second undefeated fight he was fighting. Um, and after being knocked down, he got up, composed himself, and he regained control of the fight. That's the you know, that's that's a good sign as far as where he is mentally. So that loss to Jason Sosa didn't, like, really, like, crush him. So from a mental standpoint, uh, I, I thought that was good because, you know, he went down he got back up to control of the fight. Uh, then uh, I think in the, and toward the end of the fight, he actually stood there and was looking for the knockout and, and was going with him. But I didn't see anything that makes me feel he's ready to rematch Jason Sosa right now. And I'm only nah, saying, like, no, like, no. like when I first saw it, I thought, okay, maybe. But then I saw the, the Sosa versus Stephen Smith fight. I thought, hell no. No. No, <laughs> no. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, not yet. Because, you know, uh, that fight was overseas, so I had to watch that on YouTube. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking at how the other two, I'm like, well, you know what? He showed me his mind is there. He, you know, he had this, you know, he showed me his mind was there. You know, he, 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 uh, did he improve on anything? No, but... He like you said, he was winning like I, he was winning that Jason Sosa fight before he got um, knocked out or or it was competitive. But when I watched Jason Sosa fight Steve Smith, I said, Oh no, hell no, 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 no. This dude is taking a turn that you ain't ready for just yet. So there's nothing from this fight that made me feel because like 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 my man said, it was still a close fight. Uh, Douglas was able outside of just the jab. Jason, uh, not Jason Sosa. Um, I mean, if a dude outside of the jab, you can hit him with a counter hook. Douglas hit him with yeah. a couple times. Okay, That's what I'm saying, yeah. Because after yeah. every punch he does, and my and 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 Bernard gonna get mad at me, but he does what I call the Danny Garcia syndrome. While he's punching, his head is right up. Above his no. goddamn shoulders. Bo, oh, that's the magic. On, on. That's the, that's oh. that's called the Magic Johnson no look hook. That's what it's oh, called. That, 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 <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. The Magic Johnson no, no look hook, hold on, hold on. I, I had no problem with that, 2K. But get his name right. It's Swift Cherry Picker, man. Okay, Swift my bad. Cherry. Swift <laughs> Cherry Picker. He does that way. He he just chin is above his shoulders. So when he's throwing his punches. You can come across, and he was hitting. He hit him with the left hook. Um, I don't know why he was getting on the ropes. Um, and you know, it was it was a good win for him from a mental standpoint. Again, it was another undefeated fighter. But is he ready to go back in there against Jason Sosa? No, I saw nothing different in the fight. This fight to make me feel like he can take Jason Sosa because Sosa ran over his guy. He ran over yes, his guy and fought him. Okay, I feel like a tutor should like. Even if it went the distance, it shouldn't have been this this type of a fight that you went the distance with him before. Okay, so and 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 even even after round one, there were, there were rounds with Douglas. Douglas, uh, I felt, and they, they, even though the commentators missed it, there was a there was one round I forget which one it was where he staggered. 
how's the to the way he had to stand and fight because he was hurt. And that's when he got up against the rope. So, you know, mm-hmm. going forward, yeah, I like Javier Batuta, but is he ready for Jason Sosa? No, you, you, you might want to go back to the drawing board and, you know, come up with another game plan because right now Sosa is on another – he's on another level. Right? He, he's made that turn. He's made that turn. Exactly. Right now, and, and Javier Batuta has it. All right. And, uh, you know, we'll get uh, Bernard's take on Fortuna. Uh the Fortuna Douglas match and you know what you see from him going forward in one thirty. Uh actually I don't have no take on that fight, that particular fight, because that's the one of the fights I missed over the weekend. So uh as for that, uh the, as for his uh his take on the one thirty division, uh keep what he's doing, getting them W's and working again, like two K said, working on your defense he has to become a better fighter and more efficient fighter if he's going to try to come back and try to get his get back against Sosa. Uh, basically, again, work on his defense, and that's about it, man. All right, um, so that leads us to the main event of the night, uh, the fight that's supposed to be setting up another welterweight showdown oh, uh, for early oh. March 2017. Uh, yeah. Unification belt, uh, yeah. You know, we didn't go into much review about it uh, on last week's episode just because we knew what it was. But you know, we got we got to do the analysis. So you know, no, we don't. Getting, getting it off. Getting it off. Wait, <laughs> what fight? Hey, let, me, let me take that one. What fight is this? All right, that so I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off with uh, with B on this one. Go ahead, Bernard. Uh, give us your <laughs> breakdown of that Danny it Garcia, was... Sammy Vargas fight, man. Uh, hold on, hold on. Again. Get his name that right. Is, no, not, not if, a fight. That, that the exhibition. That's what we gonna call. We gonna call it that. Basically. That, that, yeah. Basically. That, that shouldn't have been really saying. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty much. We'll call it yeah, exhibition. Here's the an- analysis on the whole fight. Garcia stood there, and he was kind of <laughs> punching like a mug. He really didn't get on the rope. He just stayed in the middle. When I mean, he had uh, Vargas on the rope. He did what he was supposed to do, give him that work. And then after that, it's, oh, yeah, he caught him with that weird, and I want to say the second round, that weird, I want to say overhand right, that knock got him to knock down the second round with Vargas. Then we saw what he did within the seventh round. He just finished him off. So pretty much it was really, I don't even want to say if it was an exhibition. I couldn't even say if it was a glorified sparring match, but it was pretty much Danny Garcia working on his working on his counter punch. That's what I took it out the whole fight. Too. Good point. Good point. That's all, all right, I saw because he was really he wasn't he wasn't really he didn't really if you notice Vargas I will speak on Vargas now Vargas wasn't really throwing didn't have a a, a real punch, a, a, a a whole lot of a, 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 a real great out um, punch output excuse me, a great punch output. He was trying to go to the body. He was trying to use his jab, but Danny was um parrying the jab, coming over, coming over with the uh with his own, or he was coming over with a straight right. It was just again, he was it was just a, it was nothing but him just practicing on working on his counter for uh the to, to possible Keith Thurman fight. <laughs> All right, um, there's some definitely some fireworks in the fight after in the post fight. Um, we'll get into that in a second. And uh, you know, the prospects of the you know, their their uh future meeting, Keith Thurman and uh Danny Garcia. But uh let me go ahead and uh I'll go ahead and give it the bow on this one, man. Uh give us your take uh away from this fight between Danny Garcia and Sammy Vargas. Yeah. Um let me you know what, let me say say this that now I'm having some phone issues, so I may have some tef- technical difficulties over here, so please excuse me. But um Danny Garcia versus Sammy Vargas. That was a welterweight fight that happened, right? In Philadelphia. Okay, you want me to talk about the fight? Let's talk about this fight. I like the part when Danny Garcia stepped out the ring and stood up with Thurman, uh, Keith Thurman and started looking at him. That was out of character for Danny Garcia. Normally, Angel Garcia does that, so it was good to see Danny do that. Then when Danny was like, Philly, you want to see me whoop his ass and all that, and you know, the back and forth. I liked it. That that was the great I mean, that was great to see. Hyping the fight, promoting the fight. Um, you know, 
And just seeing all the, you know, all the all, all the Philadelphia stars come out. You had AI there. You had Memphis Bleak and you yeah. know, all them. Oh, yeah. Beanie Siegel. My bad, Beanie Siegel. Yeah, Beanie Siegel. Yeah, Beanie Siegel and all them. So it was good to see that, to see that vibe, to see Philadelphia love, you know, show they love and, and come out and see him fight. <laughs> and that's my breakdown of the fight. I mean, you actually want me to talk about the fight fight or the fight? Okay, I'm talking about the event, but... I mean, the breakdown of the fight, I mean, do we... Yeah, I mean, is, 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 with that said, with that said, next. Okay, um. there you go. <laughs> 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 I'm going to talk about <laughs> what excited me. What's that bullshit now? <laughs> but uh, let me get uh, to let me uh, pass it to TK to get a, get another oh, spin from, it, from his perspective. Oh, we not nah, we not gonna do a breakdown on the fight. You know oh, that, that oh. it pretty much is what it was. Um, breakdown, breakdown uh, uh, the, the face off uh, and Garcia. <laughs> yeah, basically just your thoughts potentially just just leading off uh, Thurman and Garcia looking like it's it's gonna be done in March. Um, some oh, fireworks in the, in the post fight, you know, interview. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. Manny usually lets his dad do talking. You know, he came out of character yeah. and was, was wolfing, you know, this time. They've been going back and forth already. Keith is uh, a little confident in feeling himself, you know, already. You know, um, let me get your take on it, man. Uh, how you see the fight <laughs> playing out? And are there any, does Danny have any kind of advantages, just anything he could offer? In, in a fight. Uh, okay, well, first off, I am completely out of tune on Danny Garcia, Samuel Vargas. I'm out of tune on the whole face-off. You know, basically, man, I refuse to watch that fight. I made my co-host watch it. You know what I'm saying? Seth, that nigga watched it. I was at home. <laughs> you know wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> Did this nigga say I made my co-host? I made it. Yeah, yeah. Made it. Look. Look, he made that executive decision. Hey, bro, yeah, bro, exactly. he, gave, he gave his partner a homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I made his ass watch it so that we could do a post-fight video and he could just break the shit down. I just watched the motherfucker break it down. I don't know what I was doing. I was probably clipping my fucking toenails. And I figured out I had a higher priority than watching the fight. You know what I'm saying? That's probably what was happening, B. You know what I'm just saying? I'm just being honest. But I did read uh, an article about Keith Thurman and what he said. And basically, he broke the damn fight down um, in one sentence. He said, Danny Garcia is too flat-footed. And I agree 100%. I've been saying that since he was the champion at 140. Now, as far as the, um, the actual fight taking place, Man, this is a tough one because both fighters do things that uh, are a serious advantage to the opponent. Uh, for Danny Garcia, like Keith Thurman said, he's too flat-footed and he waits. He's not high volume and he doesn't apply pressure. Um, as we've seen against um, uh, Sean Porter and then uh, Diego Chavez, which was another guy that gave Keith Thurman a little bit of problems um, a couple years back, Keith Thurman succumbs to pressure. Also, uh, I don't know how, why I forgot about him, but uh, Collazo, Louis Collazo, another guy. When Louis Collazo was applying pressure and he went to that jello pudding of a body that, that uh, Keith Thurman has, <laughs> he succumbs to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so those are the type of fighters that can actually beat Keith Thurman, not a guy who stands and fucking waits on what he's going to do next. That gives Keith Thurman the opportunity to use um, his boxing ability, and I'm not saying he's like Floyd Mayweather, Eris Londi, Lara, you know, Miguel Vasquez, or anybody of that nature in terms of boxing, but he's a good enough boxer to beat a guy who's standing and waiting. At least he's a good enough boxer to tee off and look good against a guy who's standing and waiting, okay? On Keith Thurman's uh, end, he jumps in too much. The motherfucker can jump in and leave himself wide open. Um, I don't know if that's him being complacent, or, you know, him just having that, that uh, 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 I want to slug it out mentality uh, at certain points in the fight. But when he does that, he leaves himself right for a beautiful Magic Johnson no-look left hook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All night long, P. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? So if I was Keith Thurman's trainer, 
Is this still Dan Birmingham, by the way, or did he switch? Uh, still nah, he's still in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, he's still in Birmingham. Okay. If I, if I was, yeah, because I think Dan Birmingham raised him basically. Like shit. If I was with, if I was Dan Birmingham, I would say, bro, use your motherfucking movement. Don't stop the entire fight. Now he may have problems doing that because Keith Thurman is not really, um, he's not sound when it comes to his stamina. He has stamina issues late in fights. So yes, he does. Having, having him move for 12 straight fucking rounds might not be a very uh, big possibility, but it's something that he needs to do, okay? If I'm Angel Garcia, I'm trying to tell uh, Danny to apply more pressure toward Keith. Come forward, keep your fucking hands up, and, and have a higher work rate. That way you can confuse Keith. Because Keith is thinking, oh, Danny's just going to stand there. He's flat-footed. You know, he's stagnant. He's stone-footed. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to do shit. He's just going to be there uh, in, in, um, in, uh, uh, in front of me so I can hit him. If I'm Angel, I'm teaching Danny how to move forward and how to apply pressure effectively. That's an excellent fight. I can't wait to see it. I also can't wait to see the training camp to see what both fighters are going to bring to the fight. But, yeah, like I said, uh, like I just broke down, both fighters uh, have major flaws that either one can exploit. That's why I think this is a 50-50 fight. Yeah, best, com- three, best uh, comment of the night I agree. Was by, is, by, is by Keith Thurman. This will be the third daddy boy ass I didn't beat. That was the best comment I heard the whole day. What is it? He said, Keith Thurman said, this is going to be the third daddy boy I didn't beat. The third daddy boy. <laughs> Daddy boy. This is the third daddy uh, boy. Out of daddy, daddy boy. Uh, I guess yeah. talked about Keith Thurman. I mean, uh, Sean Porter, I guess he was referring to him. And, uh, Sean Porter and Robert Guerrero. Yeah, Robert Guerrero, yeah. Oh, yeah. He need to chill, man. Uh, it ain't like he's been super, super impressive in all those damn victories. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, with that said, man, I can't uh, count swift out. You know, uh, like he, well, he right, he seems to rise to the occasion when it really matters. You know, um, you know, I, every time I count him out, you know, he does something to surprise me. You know, um, so I can't necessarily say I just see Keith Thurman coming in there, out gunning them, out speeding them. You know, uh, Danny. One of the good things he does have on his side is he he can time pretty well. You know, um, as we seen in this fight against Amir Khan, even though it was the no look that the no look took, you know, uh, Showtime Lakers style. Um, <laughs> you know, even though he did that, but you know, he's uh, his timing is pretty good. You know, that's what he does the the counter yeah. is lacking. Well, he's good. He's he's good in the combination. Um, if you throw in combination, yeah. he could catch you in between them. He's really a lot of a he's lot got of a, he's got work, an underrated he does a lot too. of body. Yeah, underrated body work as well. He he stays throwing, you know, hooks to the body to finish all combinations. Um, yep. That's one of the things I do like about him. Thurman, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry to put you on blast, TK, but I don't know if it's a light skin thing or not. You know, uh, that 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 <laughs> whole body, that whole body punch thing, man. Hey, uh, hey nigga, my know, body ain't like that. My body ain't like that. Shut up. Nigga, I talked to you last week. My body ain't like that. We have seen Thurman susceptible to the body in in a lot of fights. You know, uh, Colazzo, even Sean Porter fight, he was hurt from a body punch. And Sean's not necessarily a big puncher at 147. Um, Yep. Danny said he's finally feeling himself at 147 as far as feeling comfortable with the weight. And, you know, finally adjusted, so, you know, let's get this fight going. We need more fights like this. Communication. Yeah. Especially, that go to division, division, like, especially, like, uh, in a division like 147, where it's always been a, a premier division in the sport. Definitely yeah. a fight we need, so I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, we're going to take it over to the other card that we had over the weekend that took place in Monaco. Um, I'm, having yeah, te- uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having technical difficulties with my phone. Yeah, yeah, you know it's all good. I, I won't even, I won't even, I won't even come to you know, on some of certain certain things on this card. You know, we, we don't need to oh, go <laughs> so, um, that. Uh, we had a, a couple of title fights on this card. Uh, let's get your take on starting off with the Jamie McDonald and uh, Laborio Solis fight, man. That was a pretty interesting one, in my opinion. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, man. Uh, controversial, un- unanimous decision for McDonald. I, yeah. those, those scores are ridiculous. I, I absolutely even e- even uh, the commentators from Sky Sports were like, "What the hell is is this?" Um, definitely come to TK on this one first, man, because I know you got some bombs to drop on this shit. Um, oh yeah, McDonald's yeah. Oh to yeah. The WBA World Banner Regular <laughs> Bantamweight Title. Um, but yeah, I can't say we could. Yeah, I'll, I'll let TK take it, man. Yeah, I mean, we we did a video we did a video on this man on my channel, the Gods of Boxing Talk, so, man. We kind of went in on this probably about like eighteen, nineteen minutes. Um, in my opinion, this is the best fight of the weekend. It was a very action packed fight. It was a good fight, man. Labore de Sola is a guy that was is relatively unknown. Uh, nobody, I mean, if you really think about it, the one hundred eighteen pound division is it's a small weight class, so the division as a whole is relatively unknown. <laughs> Uh, Jamie McDonald, even though he was the WBA champion of that division, he's relatively unknown. A lot of the British fans, uh, of course, know who he is, but he's not really the British fans' uh, favorite fighter, uh, per se. So um, this is just pretty much a battle of the unknowns, and it was a championship fight. Um, but Solis, man, <laughs> early in the fight, I'm watching this shit. I'm like, oh, my God, Jamie McDonald needs to get his ass off the fucking ropes yeah. like my yeah. man. Yes, yes. Dude, you have a six-inch height advantage and a four-inch reach advantage. It made, no, made no sense at all. Dude, None. Why? None. Exactly. Why are you fighting so small? Why are you jabbing, okay, and then you're not following up with a straight right hand. You're throwing a jab. You're not moving laterally. You're not throwing combinations. This is the first half of the fight, of course, guys. You're throwing a jab. You're not throwing combinations. You're not moving laterally. You're not turning your opponent. You're not keeping the fight in the middle of the ring. Okay? Then when Laborio Solis will come in, I like this move. You know, you use your shoulder to create space, and then you probably throw a straight right hand if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you throw a straight left hand, and you come with an uppercut behind that. I like that, but Jimmy McDonald wasn't doing that effectively. Because he was up against the fucking rope, and he's continuously getting hit by these looping overhand rights, see? Then, on top of that, Solis would throw his jab over Jamie's jab because he knew nothing was going to come behind that. He knew it was just going to be one jab, and that's that. So he was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to throw my jab over. A guy with a four-inch reach disadvantage in the first half of the fight was landing counter jabs. That's unacceptable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so the, 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 uh, the, the aggression of Solis, um, also, let me say this, he would back him up to the ropes, uh, Solis would. He'll throw his over, he would throw his jab. Then he'd come with the overhand right. He landed it majority of the time, but if he would miss, it would still back Jamie McDonald up further than he was already backing up when he threw the counter jab. That would put him on the ropes. That's when Solis would go to the body like no other, man. Very reminiscent of what Anthony Crowla does to his opponents when he gets your back up against the ropes. He likes to go to the body. That's exactly what Solis was doing pretty much the whole fight, but he was very successful in the first half of the fight. Um, Now, going into the next half of the fight, which is probably where the judge that scored at 116-112, O'Donnell, this is probably where he got his score from. And this is where um, looks can be deceiving, okay? You have to have a good boxing mind to understand what's exactly going on. Jamie McDonald, he, he, revved, he, he revved up his, uh, his, uh, 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 his work rate, okay? But he was still allowing Solis to get inside of him and to outwork him and to push him backwards, okay? Now, a lot of those rounds, I think it was like uh, starting from round 8 to 11, all of those could be swing rounds because, yeah, again, definitely. Jamie McDonald, he started using his jab. Then he started bringing the fucking straight right hand over behind the jab. One thing that he did that I, that I wanted him to do was two things, two things actually. First one, he would throw a double jab, then he would come with the straight right hand. And when he threw the, the two jabs, he threw the first jab. Of course, Solis is looking to do something after that. But then you would come immediately with another jab. That would confuse Solis. He was like, shit, well, what do I do? This motherfucker just gave me a look, a different look. 
So when he throw the double jab, Solis will back up, and as soon as he's backing up, that's when McDonald will come straight right in. I was like, yes, keep doing that. Second thing I wanted him to do, while the jab should set up everything you do, right, on offense, um, I wanted him I wanted him to basically start off with a straight right hand instead of start off with a jab to apply a different look. He did that one fucking time in the fight. And when he did it, it was money. It was beautiful. It back uh, solace up, and it was an excellent point game. But he never did the shit again. You know what I'm saying? So um, from 8 to 11, the work rate is probably what got him those rounds. But I still gave some of those rounds to Solis. Also, Solis looked like he was getting tired. Uh, the yeah. high aggression, um, you know, coming forward, trying to catch him, trying to stop him. I think that tired Solis out a little bit, so he was more susceptible to a lot of the punches that Jamie McDonald was doing. Also, McDonald would, like, stand there and go to the body with combinations, which also showed that he had a, a higher work rate than he did early in the fight. He looked much different later in the fight. But I still had Solis win in this fight, 115 and 113. The, the announcer should have said, and the new WBA 118-pound champion is Laborio Solis. Now, 117-111, I don't know how the fuck you get that scorecard. 116-112, I just that, yeah, with that, it. That, that was pretty fucked up in my opinion, too. Yeah. Like, that was just a, a terrible of a card from what I was looking yeah. at in, in the fight. Exactly, exactly. 116-112, it was bad, but I can actually give an argument for why it was given, even though I disagree with it. 115, yeah, that, that's, going to the whole, that's going with the whole chocolate Tito quadrus breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> so if we, if we go that route, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 115, 115, 113 for McDonald. That's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. As long as they understand that this was a close fight because of those latter rounds, but this was not a wash by any fucking means, man. But it was a good fight. Congratulations to both fighters for uh, being my pick for fight of the weekend. Okay, and um, let me go ahead and pass it on to Bernard because he seems to be uh, actually have a counterpoint to you. Uh... TK, so let me get his take on this. Uh, what you got? What you got on this one, Bernard? I scored the fight one fifteen, one thirteen. McDonald. He TK said you scored. No, no, no. That's cool. But I would have to disagree with on the the Solis part. I felt Solis. No, I felt McDonald in the seventh round when he did pick his work rate up. He kept it up through the uh, to the eleventh round where he lost that round to. Um, no, Solis won that uh, won the eleventh round, and McDonald came back in the twelfth. This is what I noticed: everything Two K said, uh, Solis did in the first half. He applied the pressure, had McDonald on the ropes. In fact, he even busted his, uh, busted his uh, McDonald's nose. <coughs> that was frustrating, McDonald. Whatever happened after that, after once that sixth round got completed, it was a turnaround at the seventh, beginning of the seventh. McDonald held that fight in the middle of the ring. He used his jab. He used his height. I disagree. disagree. Disagree with that 100%. I did, no, 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 he did not. No, yes, he did. You look, <laughs> look at the seventh round, man. Look at the seventh round. Bernard, round, round, nine, round 9, 10, and 11, my man was up against the ropes. And 12, he did a better job. I gave him that round. But round 9, 10, and 11, uh, no. McDonald was against the ropes quite a few times, brother. But hold, <laughs> on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Here's the thing, though. If you, if, even if he was against the ropes, was Solis really connected? Because it was at one point in time. Absolutely. So, no, he wasn't. Solis was on, no, excuse me. McDonald was on the ropes. <laughs> Solis threw a punch. McDonald came, went back, and came back with a counter. So it was, no, man, no. None of those, them punches that Solis was throwing was hitting McDonald. It was the right, it was the right score, 115, 110. It was a close fight, but McDonald did what he had to do to win that fight. He turned up his work rate. He used his jab. He used his height advantage. And yet, when he was on the ropes, he was going to the body. So his punches was not touching McDonald. We looked at that wow. fight. We watched that fight. We watched that what fight. What the fuck? I did twice. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I could take away from this fight. I disagree. All right, the only thing I can take away is that McDonald did pick up his work rate in the second That's half it. of the fight, which That's may it. 
may be <laughs> may have swayed the no, judges' decision, but I, I didn't think it was. I, I didn't think Madonna won that fight by any means. You know, even if it was one fifty one thirteen, I don't think he won. He was the winner in that fight. That's just what I saw. I disagree. All right, so let me get a a different perspective on this from uh, Bo. You know, he didn't have a lot of talking points on this one anyway. So, um, (laughs) 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 here we go. this one. I'm not going to lie, I really didn't even get a chance to watch this whole fight. I think I probably only watched the first four rounds of this fight. So my only thing was I was just, I couldn't understand why McDonald was giving up his height. And when I heard he won, I was just looking my chops like, okay, go fight fucking Rigo because you've been talking about it. Let's see what you oh, want. No. Not, not only that, that, was that, 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 what did you think of his talks? Uh, or at least him. Uh, unif- the unification between him and Warren. There was some talks about him moving up to 122, like you said, uh, post fight, like he's he can't make the weight too easily anymore. Um, did you see the Rashi Warren fight even happening now? You know, out there was supposedly going the person a couple months ago. Right. If, if, if he fights Warren, like he fought the, uh, like he just fought, Warren watches this dude. Warren is a good body puncher. Warren is a good mover, and Warren. It has a motor that just won't quit, okay? Warren is a much better thinker than the guy that he was in the ring with. So if he gets in there with Warren, I believe Warren, if, if, if not Washington, he, he definitely gonna make him, he, he definitely going to make him feel un, uh, extremely uncomfortable. So I like Rashid Warren in that fight. If, if, if he performs like he did, I like Rashid Warren in that fight. Because, um, and listen, I, I get what my partner's trying to say, but here's the thing. He should not, McDowell never should have been on the fucking ropes. You have the advantage. You are supposed to use that. You do not exactly. have the advantage that you have getting on them ropes. He should have kept him at the end of jail from round one. That way, he would have mentally broke down uh, uh, Salio when he fought him. He allowed Salio to gain confidence by the way he fought. And that's, that's, that, that's just it. So, I mean, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was like, and I hate to say, it was like watching Rance Bartholomew all over again. Like, why is this dude giving up his height like this? I, I, I couldn't understand it, and I don't know where that. It was worse than that. It was worse than that because he wasn't yeah, even. It was. He was just throwing a jab, and that was pretty much it. He wasn't coming behind that shit at all until later, the last, the latter half of the fight. I mean, it was, it was much worse than that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, I, and and. and 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 now here's something that both of you guys missed, and I remember watching when I watched it. When round one was over, he went back to his corner. You could see the shocked look yeah, on uh, Salido's face. Um, uh, like, oh, yeah. man, this is not going to be what I thought. <laughs> you had this shocked look. Like, oh, well, is that the round he got his nose blown busted in? McDonald's, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. So, you know, um, but McDonald can't fight like, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna maybe contribute his performance to him being hard for him to make weight. I'm I'm gonna contribute that. Maybe it was hard for him to make weight so he could keep his energy up to where he needed to keep old boy like that. But coming out the gate, he should have been as the champion. He should have been commanding coming out the gate, letting dude know you ain't in my league. That's what he, he should let from out the gate. You got it. And when you're a champion. You have to let the challenger know out the gate you yeah. are not in my fucking league. Especially with the, the prospects of the Warren fight still being out right. there, he needed to look good. Um, yeah. Even taking away from this fight, uh, I was going to ask 2K this one, his prospects are at 122 right now, especially considering what we've seen happen in the Donair fight against uh, Magdaleno that week, um, oh. or last week. Yeah. Uh, you know, where would you see uh, McDonald doing that 122 with cats like Magdaleno and Rigo? You know, um, can he hold water? Good job, that McDonald. Can, can, can that he McDonald, hold water? That McDonald that we just saw, absolutely fucking not. No. Um, if they go back to the drawing board and teach their their man how to turn their opponent and keep the fight in the middle of the ring for 12 rounds, when you are. Uh, Five foot ten, you have a fucking four inch reach advantage and six inch height advantage, or four inch height advantage and a six inch reach advantage, or at least when you have a major advantage over your opponent in those two categories, they have to teach him how to fucking turn his opponent and keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Not just for fucking six or four rounds. You got to do it the entire fight, especially since he's not a big puncher on top of that. Yeah, and that was actually something. That was actually something he was able to do in his fights against Kamita. 
Um, you know, of course, Kameda not being, uh, you know, as much as a pressure yeah. fighter, so he was in this fight. So, you know, like, you know, styles make fights like they say, you know. Um, that's easy. Yeah. That's an easier situation. Like, Jesse Magdaleno, he's going to be moving a lot, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to be forced to move laterally against a guy uh, uh, like Jesse Magdaleno or get him a rigging down or even yeah. Scott Quigg. If he can't do it effectively, he loses, which I don't think he can. I he can't. So uh, yeah, yeah, no, he he loses to I, all those guys. I think Scott Quigg <laughs> is actually somebody uh, that's actually probably an opponent that he will be looking to go after. Uh, that's after what they're trying to make. Him. Yeah, you know that the whole UK showdown thing. So I think that is the fight he's actually looking to make. Uh, even above the Rashi Warren unification, um, that fight yep. is looking like it's pretty pretty bleak right now, considering what we saw over the weekend. Um, let's go into our next fight. Um, we could probably keep this one brief. You know, one of my favorites. You know, always been the favorite of mine, even though he's you know on the decline in the latter stage of his career. Uh, Martin Murray. You know, took on New the Wall for a vacant uh, regional belt, WBA regional belt. We gonna get more into the WBA shit later. You know, again, but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, would, uh, let me go ahead and start it off with Bo on this one. What'd you take away no, from no, you don't. this No, fight? you don't. No, you don't. Don't start with me. Start with uh, one of them dudes over there, because I did not, I did not waste my time by watching this fight. Oh <laughs> man, you didn't watch Murray fight? No, I did not. <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. You just fucking up my flow right now, Bo. Hey, hey, hey. I'll probably go fuck it up worse because I'm watching the fight right now. Y'all definitely showing y'all showing your asses already. You see? You see? Hey, folks, preparation is key. Preparation is key. Hey, man, I checked out. That shit went on the list. That shit went on the list. Let's go to 2K on this one, man. Thank God 2K is back. Thank God 2K is back. Yeah, let me go to 2K, man, and we will go ahead and keep this one brief so we can go to the other two fights on this card, man. We got a lot to get into still, so we yeah, we got to jump through this one. I'll let you do a quick assessment from the Martin Murray. What do you think of him? You know, it's a this a vacant title, regional belt that he just won and, you know, uh just what you see happening in the waning moments of his career, man. Yeah, I keep it real, 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 real brief, man. I I I didn't see any different. I mean he's the same Martin Murray always has been. Probably a little more aggressive, but other than that, he's the same Martin Murray. Um I'm actually more impressed with Nuhu Lawal. I mean, uh he did that he did very good considering um, that he's virtually not known by anybody. So um, I think uh, Mark Murray, I, I don't, I hate to say it, but I think he's done, man. Like as far as he'll never be world champion. Let's just put yeah, it that way. Yeah. Um, he Definitely could be a stepping agree. stone for fighters. Yeah, he could be a stepping stone for fighters. I'd like to see Caleb Plant uh, get in a ring with him. Um, but other than that, maybe, maybe even Callum Smith get in a ring with him as well. But, other than that, being a stepping stone or, a, a, you know, a contender that can pos- that can be a very good test for guys that are trying to make a name for themselves, he won't have any other uh, uh, reason for boxing other than that, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, um, and I'm not quite sure who, well, who the 168, uh, one WBA champ is at the moment. Uh, I'll have to actually take a look at that. 168 is uh, Felix Stern. They're supposed to be stripping him. Well, he's getting, because, yeah, it's looking, Sturm is looking like he could, he going to be looking at more than just being stripped. Uh, yeah. He's looking at some, some, some jail time, supposedly, yeah. for what I've been hearing about that. He's the um, WBA super middleweight champion? Is that the WBA yeah. Middleweight? Yeah, super, WBA super middleweight. middleweight champion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I, I thought the WBA super middleweight champion was Roberto Ramirez. No, WBA. WBA. Listen, WBA. Listen, not WBO. Not W. Bo, w back. Okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I thought that was my nah, man. Uh, but I'm looking now. WBA champ is Giovanni the the Cola, the Corolla. Like I've never heard of this dude, Arsino. 
So you know what? It's possible Murray may be on to something here. Um, Isn't I'll he the regular champion? Yeah, this, there's no – this is like their super champ. They don't have no regular or regular. I, I guess this is their I, super. I guess this is the super. They only have one They only have one champ in the WBA from what I'm see, seeing. I was, I, I was reading something about that whole situation with Martin Murray because there was a lot of people upset that he – possibly he may not see no type of jail time or anything like that. He might just suffer a suspension. You mean Felix Stern? Yeah, Felix Stern. I'm saying, I yeah, he may just suffer a suspension. Wrong. Suspension. I still see. I still see Felix Stone listed as a WBA champion. Where I'm at. Oh, yes. He is. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on FightNews.com, I I just uploaded. Okay. He just, he just he, he like just it. lost. He actually just lost on the fifth by knockout, <clears throat> and he was okay. the world super middleweight. He lost to uh, a guy named Tyron Tyron uh, Zeggy from Germany. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is who the current WBA champ is. Um, Murray possibly could be facing this dude with his regional title now. Um, it looks like the WBA situation in that division isn't quite as uh, hasty as it is in other divisions, like uh, we'll go into later. Uh, with that said, let's kick it into this to the fight that we've already prelude had a prelude to. Um, Jason Sosa versus Stephen Smith for the WBA World uh, Super Featherweight title, regular version. Um, man, you guys have already went in on it a little bit. I'll start with Bo on this one. Um, what was your takes on Jason Sosa, Stephen Smith? You, you gave a little example of what you thought earlier, um, but just just go on um, in detail on this one, man. And Where do you see Sosa in the, in the 130 class, Super Featherweight division, after this performance? Uh, you know what? At first, I, I, at first, I'm not even gonna lie. I wasn't sure about him, but after that performance with Javier Vitula, then that performance with <laughs> Smith. And remember, we talked about that. I said I, he gonna beat Stephen Smith because every time this dude stepped up, this level of competition, you know, he lost. But I didn't expect what I saw out of Jason Sosa. Like I said, he's turned that corner. You know, he's he he has turned that corner. I like everything I saw in him. Um, he definitely you can look at him as being in the mix. In the 130-pound division, I would like to see him go ahead on and fight uh, Corrales and, you know, unify that WBA title so he can be the regular champ. And, man, he's got some he, he's got some really good fights in that division. And I like his chances against, you know, um, <coughs> some of the guys in there, you know, Pedraza, Vargas, you know. Um, uh, I don't know about Lomachenko. I think Lomachenko's skills at level might be a little bit above him. I don't know about Lomachenko, but he can definitely make some noise and I mean, we can make a case, okay, with Stephen Smith, but I didn't expect to see him look the way he looked in that fight. That boy looked it, man. He looked it like, like, like I said, he showed <clears throat> Stephen Smith, I'm the champion. You don't fucking belong in here with me. And that's, I like that mentality. He came in with it. He, he, it was aggressive. It was aggressive, but it was, it wasn't just um, careless aggressiveness. It was effective aggressiveness. And you know his volume punch and his motor and everything. So I like what I saw in him. I like I like what he has going forward in the future. I would like to, like I said, I like to see him in Corrales, Pedraza, any one of them dudes because I think Jason Sosa he's in the mix now right now. Uh, def- definitely his most impressive fight. You know we've seen him against uh, Nicholas Walters, uh, which you know many thought he lost that fight. You know he got the draw in that one. He was uh, getting out. Outworked and you know losing to um, Javier Fortuna in their fight before you know twelfth round knockout you know um, so this was definitely his his coming out party against uh, Stephen Smith in Monaco um, perfect fight for him uh, let me pass it on to TK let him get a little bit of breakdown on this one um, some of the things he did good in this fight and uh, you know we'll move on to the, the main event after this um, yeah this is actually a fight that I missed. <laughs> so again, I have my I have my man, you know, to watch it. You know, what I'm saying based on, based on uh, gave, gave him another assignment, huh? <laughs> yeah, based on what Seth ain't gonna, gonna like this like after this show. Hey, don't worry about it. I watched that. But I watched the fight. I watched the fight. Based based on what he nobody care about your shit. Shut up, nigga. Oh, anyway, based <laughs> 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 Nah, but uh, 
based on what he was telling me, though, I mean, I know both fighters. Um, you know, Jason Sosa, you know, he's uh, – we've already – like you said, we've already talked about it a little bit. He's turned over a new leaf since uh, having that draw against Nicholas Walter. So, um, he's actually shown – I saw some highlights, and he's shown that he had a little bit of versatility in this fight. Uh, he showed that he could fight on the outside and on the inside, not necessarily this master class type of boxer, but he has enough. He showed enough of uh, uh, versatility to be able to uh, give his opponent somewhat of a different look. Stephen Smith, on the other hand, I mean, this is a guy who he's very game. I thought he gave y'all's boy, Jose Pedraza, a little bit of trouble in their fight. Um, the fact that Pedraza's dumbass likes to fight on his back foot, even though he can't fight on his back foot. He likes to be <laughs> on his back foot. You know what I'm saying? And Stephen Smith is like, okay, well, shit, I'm going to go ahead and apply pressure behind this jab, and I'm going to go ahead and score some points. Now, Pedraza won that fight hands down, but Stephen Smith actually gave him a little bit of trouble just because he has, ex- he has a, a large heart, um, and he will actually uh, uh, try to uh, – uh, will his way into winning a fight. Um, and that's what he tried to do here. He was knocked down in the second round, um, and he tried to will himself back into the fight, but Jason Sosa was just too much. And once again, that's a testament to what I said earlier, man. He is quickly emerging uh, into becoming one of the best fighters at 130, a guy actually that I want to see uh, against Vasil Lomachenko or possibly um, – uh, what's his name? Just said his name. Jose Pedraza after you know the uh, the fight with Tank. So uh, if, if he beats uh, Tank, so uh, yeah, man. After he's a good fighter. All right. Um, let me. Uh, I think we might have a caller on the line, so let me try and take this one. Um, caller, you there? Caller, caller on the line. Guest caller. All right. Uh, was that uh? Did you have anything else you wanted to add on that oh, one? Oh no, PJ? that was that was right on time. I just finished. Okay, uh, so we'll go ahead and take it on into the main event, man. Uh, a lot of uh, re- different reviews on this one. Um, well, I won't say good reviews either. Um, Luis Ortiz in the heavyweight main event making his debut. Um, over you know overseas. Against, uh, I don't know what the hell to call this guy anymore. I don't even think he deserves the title veteran, Malik Scott, you know, after what we saw um, in, from this fight and many others in the, this part of his career. Man, uh, we got to go with uh, Cuba Loca from Figaro on this one since it's uh, one of his Cuban mates. I'm 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 having technical I'm I'm having technical difficulties with my phone, man. My my my, my reception down here in this basement. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let you go ahead and I'll let you go ahead and take that one, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> your thoughts on the Luis Ortiz in this fight, uh, or what he you know was able to do um, in the fight against Malik Scott. It uh, I can't you can't put any of the blame on Luis Ortiz in my opinion. Um, Hell no. Nah. But uh, go ahead and take it, Bo. Um, you know what? When you hear, when I, I heard people say how he got exposed, how he, uh, when I was like, oh, he, he got exposed. Oh, he, you know, he can't handle movers. Listen, you can clearly see Malik Scott did not come to fight. He came to survive. All right, that's all it was. He didn't come to fight. He came to survive. Um, would I have liked to see Luis Ortiz get him out of there? Of course I would have, all right? Were there some things he could have probably did to get him out of there? Yeah, you can always make that argument, but then again, always revert back to what I tell you guys. That's why he wasn't, like, on the Cuban Olympic team. He has a professional style. But for those who want to criticize and say, oh, you know, overhyped and all of that. He was in there with a dude whose sole purpose was one thing and one thing only to survive. <laughs> he got washed every round. Um, was it a boy fight? Yeah, but you can't look at it. It wasn't like Lewis Ortiz wanted to make it a boy fight. And then somebody said something to me about, oh, well, he frustrated Lewis Ortiz. How the fuck do you frustrate somebody when you ain't doing shit? 
Explain, please explain me how you frustrate somebody when you ain't doing shit. He was frustrated because he wanted this dude to fight. You know, he wanted this dude to you know engage or fight or do something so he can get back at him and count him. And Malik Scott wasn't doing anything. I mean, you he was going down from the air that was going over his head. He was dropping, and then he had yeah. a ridiculous thing that he did that tripped me out. He, he's on the ground, six foot six motherfuckers on the ground. He extends his arm like a goddamn baby. To the rest of them, like pick me up. So I'm like, what the hell? And I'm, like, I'm like, what is this I'm looking at? So, wow. And, so, and, uh, you know, but uh, uh, I'd like to see Louis Ortiz get him out of there, yeah. But uh, this is one of those things where we talk about how sometimes you are a victim of your own success because Louis Ortiz is known as a knockout, he's known as knock people out, and when he don't do it, those who question his skill set or want to see him being there with 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 uh, stiffer competition, they use this as fuel to light their fire. Oh, shit, I told you he wasn't shit. No, the motherfucker he was in there didn't want to do shit. And I'm gonna go back to something. Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna go back to something um, that uh, reminds me when this fight was going down. I saw Malik Scott put a post up on Twitter of him in a house coat sipping tea. And I'm like, this motherfucker just enjoying the fruit of, of the event of this fight. Because yep. there's, there's, there's no way he went into this fight trying to be serious at all, period. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and take it over to your partner in crime, uh, Bernard. Uh, what was your take from this fight, Bernard versus, uh, I mean, uh, Malik Scott versus Luis Ortiz? And mm-hmm. this being his debut with Max Um <laughs> Do you think this is what Eddie Hearn? Uh, was expecting, or you, how do you think this was as far as in, in, in her, Eddie Hearn's eyes? I'm pretty sure Eddie Hearn didn't expect this. I, with Luis Ortiz this being his first fight in the UK and him being his first fight on the matchroom boxing, he, we probably all expected fireworks. I was thinking, okay, hey, it's going to be a fight. We know uh, what well, Luis Ortiz brings. We know Malik Scott is kind of shaky. We thought, okay, he will get him out. But as you clearly can see from the gate, Malik Scott was not trying to engage um, Ortiz for the first round. You just could tell. You can tell. First thing he started doing, he started moving. He started circling around the whole ring, just circling around the whole ring. But it was yep. fun, it was frustrating. To, uh, yeah, Ortiz, you can tell the first round he said that he looked. Yeah, he was frustrated because it's like, come on, man, throw a punch. All all he was doing was Malik Scott kept doing was. Going around the ring, parrying his jazz, parrying his jazz. He's still, I don't even think he would do a punch going around. So it was pure fuckery on Malik Scott's part. Ortiz yeah. did what he, he did, yeah, he needed to do. And I mean, ain't the first time we've seen right. it from Malik Scott either. You know, Deontay Wilder, who does not forget that whole. Derek Chisora, too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so Malik I mean, Scott has a history of doing this kind of shit in fights. Uh, go ahead, Bernard. So I would just basically say this. What two, 2K said two weeks ago when this fight came out, whatever he said, he was right. <laughs> he was right by Malik Scott. So, you know, I mean, do we really want to pass it to him so he can really just continue to shit on this man? I mean, to do shit on himself. To do shit on himself, oh. man. He proved 2K right. 2K was right. So, in the words of my partner, Next. All right, and just to close out this uh, the the review segment, um, after the fight, Eddie Hearn said it's looking like we could see possible, depending on Anthony Joshua's actual, uh, you know, prospects and his, you know, him continue winning, uh, we could see Luis Ortiz and him in about you know ten months or so, ten months to a year. I don't know how the hell you come up with a date like that that far out already, but. It's not the first time in boxing, so, you know, nothing can surprise you there. Um, this fight was for the vacant WBA Intercontinental, Intercontinental Heavyweight title, so, yes, Luis Ortiz was stripped of his interim status. Um, with the WBA, it's looking like, uh, for this region, <clears throat> how that fares for him, if he puts him in line to fight the winner, Eclipse Go Joshua, or any of the other. Uh Fighters in the WBA vying for that, what they call consolidation tournament. I don't know what the fuck it is they're trying to do there. 
Um, yeah, so I we'll see how that plays out. He's still in the midst with the WBA apparently somehow, some way, even though he's not in the title. Um, let's move on, man. We had a major announcement this uh, past couple of days. Um, I want to say it was yesterday. It might have been a couple of days ago, but a fight that we were already expecting, you know, that was announced to happen. It's actually been finalized and brought back to the table after, you know, some lingering issues, promotional issues with both fighters. Um, Jose Pedraza taking on uh, the protege of Floyd Mayweather Jr., uh, Gervonta Tank Davis, for uh, his 130-pound super featherweight title. Um, I believe he's the IBF champion, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Yes, he is. Yeah, so that fight will be going on in January 14th, man. So, you know, we, we got the excellent fight uh, from PVC happening already lined up for 2017. This one, just another one being added to it. Um, I'm going to start off with Bo on this one, man. Uh, your thoughts on this fight being finalized after it, was, it looked like it was going to happen. It was all actually announced before, you know, there were some issues between Tank and Floyd, and the driver was having some issues as well with uh, Lou DeBella lately, as we've seen in the press. So um, what's your take on this finally being announced? It happened in the beginning of 2017, man. What can you say? Uh, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm glad this fight has actually happened. I'm glad this fight is taking place. Uh, we're going to find out if uh, Jelante Davis is serious or if Floyd is pushing him to uh, moving him along too fast because, and I, I hate to say this, but I know there's one dude that's licking his chops, and that's a dude by the name of Tevin Farmer who's been wanting oh, yeah. to beat Jelante Davis' ass for minutes. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> uh, if we're going to find out. But I hope. Also one of the Pedraza rematch. So, yeah. He, he that's what I want to see. He on, he on both right. of them right now. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, right. He won't move up him right now. So I only hope that whatever the issues was with, with Floyd and Devontae Davis has to work out. So Devontae Davis is going to be had going to fight with him. But uh, my, biggest question, my biggest question and concern with this fight, like, I like Jose Pedraza, but there's still a lot of, like, there's a lot of things Devontae Davis does. You know, he admires his work too much. Um, he, he, yeah, he moves his hand, but he's he's not exactly great coming forward with fighting. He he's more of a he has to stand still and have you standing still coming at him type of a fighter. Okay, uh, so I mean I like it. It's a good fight. It's going to be a good test for us to find out where Javante Davis is in his career. But you know if his mind mentally ain't right, because that's my biggest concern with Javante Davis. He seems to be he always seems to have one foot in, one foot out. One foot in, one foot out. If you watch his Twitter and the things he be talking about, he seems like he just got one foot in, one foot out. And I don't, what I don't want, and I hate to say this, not to talk about the guy, I don't want to do <laughs> another, another Adrian Broner, which gets distracted with stuff outside the ring instead of opening what's going in the ring. This is his moment. This is a big fight. But um, that's that's probably really all I got to say about this fight. Listen, you know, Pedraza is Pedraza. Uh, Pedraza is going to come at him. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to try to show him he don't belong in there. Pedraza has also been frustrated. You know, he's been frustrated with his promotion. So I'm I'm concerned with him mentally going into this fight also as well. But you got two cats who probably mentally come into, the, into this fight. It's going to be some questions that's going to be needed to ask them. But it's a good fight. I like Great it. Great point, Bo. Great point. You, you know, know, that's actually a good point right there. Uh, both have some, some questions about him. I know TK is always talking about Pedraza and him just being the guy, you know, a regular guy that's a champ right now, like nothing special about him. You know, you hey, have hey, uh, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to interrupt fellas. Um I think Winky Wright is on the line. Okay. Uh yeah, we got Southwest Florida. Let me uh bring him on, man. Uh everybody we got a guest on the line. Uh Winky Wright. Uh how you doing today? First off, I wanna say thank you for coming on the show, man. How how's everything going? I'm good, man. What's up, man? My bad I'm late, man. I know you told me 930, but I had some stuff come up that I had to take care of. Oh, no problem at all, man. No problem. Better late than never with you, sir. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a legend. You know what I'm saying? We're blessed to have you on, man. So thank you for coming on. Um, let's get the session started, man. Fellas, uh, Q&A. 
Um, I'll go ahead and let Bo go since he was uh, <clears throat> going through his topic. Any questions you got for the former champ, man? Yeah, hey, hey, Mr. Wright, thank you for joining us so much, man. We really appreciate your time. Um, no problem, man. My question for you is you went through a lot of struggle before you finally got that fight that people noticed you when you fought Moses. Before then, you was a sparring partner and stuff like that. Once that moment came that you fought Felix Trinidad, what was it about Trinidad that made you think that was going to be an easy fight? Because I remember the interview, you was like, this is an easy fight. This fight is not going to be that hard. <laughs> what was it you saw that made you feel like Felix, Felix Trinidad was going to be easy for Winky Wright? You know, style, styles make fights. And, uh, you know, Trinidad yep. was was a power style. <laughs> And uh, you know, I, I realized the way that he that he fought that you know it, it matched very easily with my style. So I knew if I keep him off balance and, and use that jab, that that it would make it hard for him to really load up and punch hard. You know what I'm saying? Get any balance, and that's what happened. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. When you stood there, man, and stuck your face out in front of Shane Mosley and let him hit you. <laughs> What was that in your mind at that time? I said, when you stood there in that Mosley fight and you let him hit you and you was yelling at me, you can't hurt me, and he hit yeah. you, what was going through your mind at that time, man? <laughs> no, you know, uh, it was more, you know, Shane. You know, the, uh, Shane is a great guy, man. I, I take my hat off to Shane because Shane did what a lot of them fighters wouldn't do, step up and fight me when when everybody was scared of me. You know, uh, Shane stepped up to the plate and said, look, I fight him. Y'all are scared of my fight him. See, a lot of people didn't give Shane his respect for that. People were just saying, why would he fight Winky Wright? But he was fighting me because nobody else wanted to fight me. He was fighting me because he wanted to prove that he was the best. And to do that, he had to fight me. The rest of them ran from me. You know, it was one time in my career where, you know, I was the most feared man in boxing. Nobody in my weight class wanted to fight. They was jumping. They was running to different weight classes. You know, I held the belt. I fought everybody. I fought the most number one contenders probably in in, in my era because only them was the only guys that wanted to fight me, my number one contender, because they had a chance at the title. But everybody else would, would they wouldn't pick me to fight. So you know, boxing had got to be so it had got to be born to me. You know what I mean? But but Shane Mosley, you know, like I say, I stuck my face out because I was letting him know that he couldn't hurt me at that time. I was just such in such a great shape and felt invincible that. I told him, I said, you can't hurt me, dog. And he was like, oh, I got, I hurt you with that punch. I said, you know what, here. I just put my hand, I said, go ahead, hit me. And then, you know, he threw his little three-punch combination, and then he, he, he saw he couldn't hurt me. And then, he, you know, that was it. If, you know, shit, if you put your hand down and let a nigga hit you, and he, he can't, you can't hurt him, you're like, you know what, I need to find something else to do. Right. All right. Uh, 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 go ahead. Let me uh, cut in on real, real fast, So. Um, just to follow up on something you said, Winky, uh, you, you had a pretty, you had a pretty interesting career to where you had to spend a lot of your time uh, fighting overseas because you couldn't get the fights that you wanted here in the states, and you know guys were mm-hmm. avoiding you. Mm-hmm. Um, can you give your explanation on how things were going for you in your career at that time, man? Uh, just what was the experience of like you having to go that route as opposed to you know other American fighters who get the they do all their coming up and, you know, go through the prospect phase and the actual uh-huh. country. Well, what, it, what what that did for me was help me become a well-rounded fighter. It helped me become <clears throat> the fighter that I became because I didn't need to be in my hometown. I didn't need to be in front of fans that were cheering for me for me to come out here and win. You know, I was going over to pack stadiums in Europe, you know, and I was like the co-main event to, like, Hasim, I mean, to Lord Nassim, Prince Nassim Hamed, and and then all them kind of fighters over there. So you know they was they was putting in fifteen, twenty thousand people in in the stands. You know what I'm saying? So then I would come over there and fight one of their fighters. The whole everybody cheering for the other fighter, and and only people cheering for me is me and my coach. <laughs> so you know I go in there, and by the end of the fight, I got all them same people that was booing me. Now they cheering for me. So. You know, it was a great thing. It just it just helped me appreciate my skills and appreciate what I was doing in boxing. Okay, and uh, I'll take it back to the ball that one. Thanks for asking my question, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, man, it's I mean, an honor to have you on, like like we said, man. Uh, go ahead. I appreciate bro. it. 
I appreciate now, it. I do that. One more question. You and Austin Hoyer, was, was that a fight that you wanted to happen? That, I that, was, that, 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 was, that, that was the only fight I wanted to happen, you know, because no, everybody, anybody who made money made it through Oscar De La Hoya. None of them fighters that was making money at that at this time, they, they weren't making no kind of money until they fought Oscar. You can go back to uh, Floyd. Floyd was making okay money. Floyd was making a million, two, three million, three million for a fight. He started making a big money when he fought Oscar. Pacquiao wasn't making no big money until he fought, uh, until he fought uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Bernard Hopkins wasn't making big money until he fought Oscar De La Hoya. But Oscar De La Hoya did not want to fight me. Why? See, it, this was this was what I mean by I had to take my hat off the same Moses because Oscar at the time they you know he was still ranked as one of the best fighters out there, and everybody knew you had to go to Oscar to really make the money, but Oscar would not fight me. Why would you go down and fight a, a Pacquiao who was a smaller fighter at 147? He didn't, at that time, he wasn't big, he wasn't known to be a, a great fighter because he was a small guy, but you got me, me and you, everybody at that time wanted to see me and you, but he didn't want to fight me. He flat out didn't want to fight me, no matter what. I'm like, boxing is boxing. You know, I love watching Muhammad. I mean the 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 uh, Marvin Hagler, the Sugar Ray Leonard, because them was true fighters, man. People talk about you know boxing, but they made boxing because they fought each other. Great fighters fought each other, not once, not twice, but three times, just to prove that they were the best. Nowadays, these fighters fight one fight, they get a they get a title, and they think you know people calling them great. You ain't you ain't great because you won a title. You ain't great until you prove that you're great. Until you beat someone that's great, not the one that with a title. Just because they got a title, don't mean that's that they're great. You get yes, what I'm saying? Yes, you know they 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 throwing around this great there. This is a great fight. Great? No, no, they not great until they fight somebody who you think they can beat them, and then they they come out and do something. That's when they become great. Not because you fight fighters you should beat. Yeah, if you fight fighters you should beat, you doing what you should do. You got a good matchmaker. But when you fight somebody where they think, man, this guy can beat you. That's when you become great. Like, I'm going to tell you, Andre Ward is going to be a great fighter. Even if any, let's say the worst thing happened, Andre lose this fight. He still, you can never take away Andre Ward's greatness because he fought that super Great team. point. He, he fought all the other fighters. He fought the best fighters in, at that time and beat all of them. That's what makes Andre Ward a great fighter. You get what I'm saying? People want to say Cobalt off, he's great. This and that. He's a great puncher. Don't give me, he's a nice boxer. But I can't call him great because he hasn't, he hasn't fought. That 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 kind of competition at that time, you know, he beat up on a few people, but they was already scared of him. You know what I'm saying? You got that Mike Tyson syndrome. You know, people feel that if they hit him, they gonna go down. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it ain't gonna happen with mm. old Andre Ward. Andre Ward believe he gonna go in this fight and win, just like Kovalev gonna win. So now by Kovalev beating Andre Ward and doing all this, yes, then I can start saying I can consider him as a great fighter because he beat a great fighter. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, we, we people can say, well, he beat Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins ain't, you know, Bernard Hopkins is old. Bernard Hopkins is old. Bernard Hopkins is a cagey fighter. Don't get me wrong. And at one time, he was a great fighter. But he, he was past his time. He was just, he was a smart fighter that can do different things to, to, to sneak a win out. But, you know, he wasn't doing no hell of a fighting. No. Nah. <laughs> All right. Um, let me uh, go ahead and swing it over to two K. Um, uh, I know you got some questions for the champ, man. I'm there, and Wink, man. How you doing, boss? I'm good, man. All right, man. Bo took my damn question, my top question, man. You know, a lot of people <laughs> when they talk about when they talk about Oscar De La Hoya, man. Um, people know what's up, B. They talk about how he ducked uh, 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 Winky Wright. And how he ducked mm-hmm. Jose Luis Lopez. Those are the two people they always talk about him ducking, so they know what's up. But um, as far as what you just said, man, about Cat, um, you know, saying you know people saying this is a good fight, but Cat ain't really proving himself. How do you feel about what Gennady Golovkin is doing right now? You know, what I'm saying my man has gotten people calling him out from 168, from 154, saying they'll go to 160. You know, you had Andre Ward saying he'll fight him at 168. You got Canelo calling him at 154. But he's only seeming to move out of 160, a division where nobody wants to fight this cat, right? He only seems yeah. to want to move out of 160 if it's Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao. So That's because he knows, he knows them fighters are dangerous. 
The fighters are not exactly. dangerous enough for him. You see what I'm saying? He knows that Floyd is a hell of a boxer, this and that, but he feels like he, Floyd is, is a lot smaller than him. So if he catches Floyd, he's thinking that he's going to knock him out. But once again, you got to catch him. So, But a fighter like Andre Ward, who ain't scared, a fighter like Canelo, who ain't scared, who a hell of a boxer and a hell of a puncher, that's the fight yep. you want to see. Now, if you want to call uh, Galump and great, let him fight Canelo. Then we're going to see how great he is. Yep. See, like my co-host likes to say, the co-host of my channel, man, he likes to say that Golovkin is a guy who he only fights motherfuckers that he knows he can beat. That's the whole reason why they put him against all these type of guys. It's pretty much the whole reason why he won't move out of 160. Do you feel that's actually the formula that K2 and Tom Lawler are actually doing? Do you think they're kind of milking the system with uh, Gennady that's all, Golovkin? That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. They miss. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I think Golovkin is a good fighter. I think he he got yeah. he got a lot of skill. But you need that skill to be pulled out of you. You need that skill to be shown against a fighter that we think that can beat you. Who has he fought that we thought could beat him? You name a Nobody. fighter that you thought was exactly. going to beat him. Before he even Nobody. got him, you knew he was going to win. You know, ain't no fighter that he fought thought he was going to lose. You know, and then yeah. the little Willie Monroe fought a good fighter. He a champion now. That dude, he he got a lot of heart. He's a slick little boxer, but he got a lot of heart. But he shouldn't have been in there with Glump. But he showed that if you ain't scared of him, you can you can do something. That's why I like I like Canelo against him. If, if him and Canelo fight, I'm betting Canelo because Canelo can yeah. Canelo can box and Canelo been in there with the tough guys. So we're gonna see what happens because it's easy to hit somebody and not get hit back, and yeah, you feel like you're invincible. But now get your ass yeah. and they hit somebody and they hit your ass back just as hard. Now that jab ain't gonna be as quick. That motherfucker overhand right, you ain't gonna throw it as hard because you realize shit, something coming back and it may knock yeah. your ass out. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm bet I'm betting Canelo because Golovkin is right for that uppercut. You know what I'm saying? As we saw again, uh-huh. Kell Brook. Kell Brook landed that fucking uppercut beautifully. That's Canelo's money punch. He's going to stand back. He's going he gonna to wait for you to come forward. He's going to count you with that uppercut. So that right there alone, I'm betting Canelo. But um, shit, since you're talking about Cat, um, that, that, you know, they, they, they want to get – let me say this. They, they want to get that recognition without actually putting in that work. You a guy that actually put in that work. I mean, you lost – early fights in your career and came back to be one of the best fight, fighters to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of guys, like, let me say, Danny Jacobs, for example, um, he's on record <laughs> basically, stating, <laughs> basically stating that he is second best to Gennady Golovkin. He, he's on record saying that. Then he's on record basically saying, you know, he won't fight Gennady Golovkin until he gets the right kind of money. Let me ask you, Wayne. Well, first Have of all, first fighter? of all, first. Go ahead. Go Danny, ahead. Go you said Danny Jacobs? Yes. Yeah, Danny Jacobs is a good little fighter. I like, man. I like Shorty. I like, I think he's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a fighter with, with a lot of talent. He got a lot of heart, you know. Yeah. Um, once again, they got to let these fighters, you know, they got to get into these fights where they're not the favorite. You know, yeah, he fought, he fought uh Kid Chocolate. You know, and he, like I say, he fought Kid Chocolate. He, he, he Kid Chocolate caught him and did what he had to do. He looked good. But I'm saying they got and for them to be want to be called great, they got to fight the other fighters in their weight class. Who exactly. Are great. You got to fight the uh right. the Golumpins and everybody else. If you feel you're the best, you got to prove it. Exactly. I wait. That's, Listen, that's my... when, I was, when I when I was champion, I couldn't wait to try to unify the belt. If somebody thought they was better than me, you know what? Okay, you think you're better than me? I think I'm better than you. Let's prove it. That we ain't, yep. ain't, ain't no, we don't even got to talk no more. Just let, let's make the fight. And everybody always yep. talk about how Winky Wright talked himself out of the fight. Man, it wasn't me. It was the, they was talking their way out of the fight. They found a way where they wouldn't have to fight me. It, either it was not trying to pay me what I was due, or or they just try to say, well, he hard to deal with. I wasn't hard to deal. I was the easiest dude to deal with. I, I took short money to make a lot of fights. If I wouldn't have took short money, a lot of them fights would have never happened. But I knew I could beat them, so I took the fight. And then, like I said, when I started losing at the end of my career, it was boring. Boxing was boring as hell to me. I could see where boxing was losing everything because people didn't want to fight. They had managers running boxing. And I'm like, how? you can't yeah. do that. You got to give the fans what they want to see. The fans don't want to see me fighting uh, some people I don't even know. I don't even get up for 
And that's what it was. When it got to that point where, you know, I'm fighting motherfuckers that I ain't even never seen. And I'm like, man, I'm a motherfucker. I'm a Why am I fighting? Why am I fighting a motherfucker I don't even know? You know what I'm saying? I yeah. can't even train hard for that shit. It's like, look, I'm going ahead and making a little bit of money. I'm quitting. I'm done after this shit. <laughs> and that's, hold on, and hold that's on, hold on. One quick, my daughter, real fast. I got to click on. <laughs> All right, uh, we got uh, we also got another we also got another guest on the line. We got Darnell Darnell Boone uh, joining us. Uh, man, Boom. how's it What's going, up, man? D Darnell Diesel Boogie. Boom, what's how's going it on, going, man? man? Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this Earl Face? You got Earl Face on the phone with us. <laughs> hey, man, it's going, man. <laughs> what, what's going on, Wayne? What's up, man? Hey, it's cooling, man. How are you? Everything good? Oh, yeah, man. Training hard, man. You know how it go. When you fighting again? Man, you know how these folks, man, they running from me, man, so I'm just staying ready. You a sharp yeah. fighter, man. That's why. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They're going to stay away from me. Look, anybody that's a danger, they're going to stay away from me. Everybody want to look good against that dude that they can beat, but they don't want to fight that tough dude. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Right. Keep, putting, uh, keep putting, keep putting in work. Keep doing what you're doing, and they gonna see you. Eventually, listen, I'm, 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 I'm proof of that. They can run. Listen, I had HBO not giving me dates. I'm, I'm the champion. I, I don't got no dates. But you got these bulls. They ain't even got titles, and they was giving dates too. So I was like, right. you know what? I'm gonna make y'all respect me. I ain't gonna ask you to respect me. I'm gonna make you respect me. That's what they had to do. Please believe me. Uh, so that's what it is, man. And and, and then, like I said, stop, don't you know? Boxing is they they want you to sell your soul to get some money. I I ain't selling my soul to nobody, and I'm all, and that's why I feel people respect me because I say what I say and I meant what I say. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I, ain't for no, I ain't fall for anything. Somebody tried to do something and I felt it was doing wrong. I ain't do it. I said I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. And it is what it is. I got to live with my decision, and I did that. Right. Well, shit. I can ask I can ask both of y'all the same question since both of y'all on here. Now, mm-hmm. would either one of y'all on camera concede to being second best to a particular fighter? No, I ain't. <laughs> I uh, when, when I fell when, when I felt I was at the top of my game and I felt I was the best, I ain't care who you put me in the name with. Exactly. You know, and that's, that's, and that's my to. point. And these, Listen, these fighters hey. don't have that. You know, when, when Danny Jacobs said that, when Danny Jacobs said that, I damn near turned the fucking interview off. Because if you're going to sit there and say I'm second best to a guy that people want you to fight in your division, to actually standing behind you as a guy that will actually give him trouble, you know, Gennady Golovkin, and you concede right in front of those fans that you second best, to pretty much just turn it off the goddamn fight. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then, of course, he talks about money. This is something hey, I never heard here, bro. you guys say. I'm, I'm, be- I'm better than half of them cats on my worst days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we know that, mm-hmm. Darnell. Ask, ask right. Donna Stevens that question. We can ask Donna Stevens that. We know that. <laughs> right. Boy, Chicken sit. Out. Chicken sit. you knock him out? <laughs> yeah, I'll stop. I didn't mean, yeah, even stop. knock him out, but he took the fight. They changed the weight on him also. That that was the second fight. Okay, the second fight, right? Yeah, that was the second fight. Yeah, he was he was way bigger than me in the second fight, and we had clash heads. You know what I'm saying? And my my orbital bone was broke. So when he had when he had dropped me, I just stayed down, man. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't gonna keep fighting when I was already hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah, you did right. All right, fellas, we got a guest uh, that would like to ask you a, a question. We gonna bring him on the line. Uh, one of our guys from the chat, you know, Benny Boom, uh, you know, Benny Blanco. Uh, what's going on, man? Uh, I know you got a couple of questions for the champs uh, for both of the guys. Or I'm uh, go ahead and let them out, man. Yo, yo, what's going on, Benny Blanco? I'm doing good, my brothers, man. God bless y'all. Have a great night. Uh, what up, man? What's going on? Uh, great fight. You know, this good, my weekend. brothers, man. God bless y'all. Have a great night. Uh, we're going to have uh, that Kovalev and Ward fight, man. Picking Ward to do this. He's going to do it. Um, you brothers. got any questions you'd like to ask Darnell or uh, Wingy while we got him, oh, on, the line? Got him yeah. on the line? Darnell, what's up, my brother, man? God bless you. You got anything uh, in the schedule, anything coming up soon that, that, that we should be aware of? 
Well, I got I got a couple of things on the on the um, on the agenda, but I'm trying to see which one is feasible for me. I don't know if I'm gonna either take this tune up or go ahead and go to Russia and take this IBO from this guy. So we're gonna see we're gonna see which one is more feasible because I haven't fought since last April. So I'm thinking I I, I really want to take the tune up so I can at least shake some rust off. But if not, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ahead and just keep training hard and go ahead and take this IBO. Yeah, that that that's cool, man. I, you know, whatever you do, you know, you always got our support. Um, man, you you you're a guy that <laughs> nobody want to mess with. You know how you do it, how you get down with, it, how you how you do your thing in, in, in the ring. Um, nothing but love to you. Um, I'm I'm dying to see you in the ring again, and I know that you're gonna get down with your business pretty soon. Whatever whatever oh. route you take, man, you're gonna you're gonna have our support 100 percent, man, always. No doubt, bro. Thanks, man. I I definitely appreciate that, man. <laughs> Uh, Denny, you got anything you like to ask uh, Winky Wright? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got him on. Uh, we, I definitely Winky. got some things I like to think his brain about while we got him on, man. So definitely uh, pop off if you got something you like to ask him. If you got Winky Wright on, the only thing I want to ask Winky Wright is how was Tito Trinidad's power in that fight? I'm a big Trinidad fan. Um, did you feel his power? <laughs> well, you know, I could feel it through my gloves. He can punch. He definitely can punch. But like I said, you got to be able to hit somebody to hurt him. Yeah, you you had a great defense, no doubt about that, man. No doubt about that. Well, who was the Appreciate toughest it. fight, Rinky? That Rinky that you man, played? they they you hey, know. they all tough, dog. They all tough. You can't, you know, just how you feeling some days. Some days you might not be on your your A game, and you might not be fighting the best fighter. But you know that fight can be a tough fight. So it just, you know, it, 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 certain times, and you know, but when you got when you got a fight that you up for, you know, that's when you know everything is easy. All right, yeah, Benny, I, I want to thank you for calling in, man. Uh, thanks for the questions. I'm glad you uh, you got to try it, man, man. We've been waiting for you to call in for a minute to talk some, talk some boxing with us. I'm glad you could join us today. Uh, we definitely got a lot of a lot more interviewing to go and a lot more questions left <laughs> to ask the champ, man. So definitely stay tuned in with us, Benny. Definitely, man. God bless you all, man. Have a great night, man. All right, man. It's been a you pleasure. Too. All right, Winky, right, uh, I got a question for you myself, man. Uh it's just something I've come across, you know, just over the past couple of years that I've always just had my questions about and wonder how close this was really close to uh, actually happening. Um, Man, Floyd was still with top rank at the time. <laughs> yeah, 140. Uh, you're at 154 doing your thing, man. How close mm. were we really to seeing that fight happen? Nah, was it really? Not, not, was no, it not talk to not close at all, man. It was, it was, you know, it was talk, and I heard uh, the talk afterwards. So I, it wasn't, no, it wasn't close at all. You know, Floyd was doing this thing, I was doing my thing, but um, it was just somebody. Some people must have said some stuff, but no, it, it was never close. Not that I know of, you know. Man, those folks didn't want that work. They ain't worth that work. week. Not, not at that time. Not at that time. Oh, at that time. Yeah. <laughs> You you was in your prime, bro. You yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they ain't want that not 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 that type of yeah. work not being. Hey, I remember Emmanuel Stewart talked about that, and Emmanuel Stewart said himself that was just something to say that we made an offer. It wasn't nothing serious behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't nothing serious behind that. Like I said, you know, uh, I think Floyd's a hell of a fighter. Great, great skill. You know, just at that time, that might have been just the wrong time for that for that kind of fight. But you know. You know, we never know. You know, maybe they wanted to do it, but I never heard about it. So, like I say, he's he a friend. I, I, I got utmost respect for him, and uh, it is what it is. Okay, um, 2K, um, oh, so sorry, either you got any more questions uh, you'd like to ask, either Diesel or Winky? Go ahead, Bernard. Um, actually, I do have a question for both fighters. <clears throat> Since the fight, the big fight coming up this weekend, I want y'all like to uh, see if y'all can break a quick breakdown for me, both of y'all, on the Ward and Kovalev fight. Starting with Winky first. Say that, say that one more time. I couldn't hear you. Oh, I would like y'all to break down the Ward and Kovalev fight and who y'all predict uh-huh. y'all predictions. Okay. Uh, for me, I think that uh, the fight going to come out, you know, both fighters going to come out. I think Ward... Uh, Going to try to establish that you know he can hit he can hit Koval off and 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 move off his punches. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to try to stay there and trade with him. He's not going to run around. He's just simply going to, he's going to slide. He's going to do a lot of sliding 
and you hitting him with the jab because Ward got a real good jab and he got a good body jab. So you're going to see him. I think you're going to see him stabbing him to the jab, to the stomach a lot. And then, you know, just trying to uh, catch Kovalov with a lot of good counter shots. And then uh, I can see Kovalov trying to, you know, set Ward up with, you know, up on his toes a little bit, trying to throw his jab and then come up with the hard right hand and whatever. But I just think Floyd, I mean, I just think uh, Ward going to win the fight. Man, I think Ward is, is just a sharper fighter, smarter fighter. But, you know, when you got somebody like Kovalov with that power, anything can happen. All right, and uh, Darnell, you've actually been in the wing, ring against both fighters, so I know you have an interesting take on uh, on this bout as well, man. So let, let's get you to chime in on that. Yeah, well, my my outlook on it is uh, Ward not used to that that weight class yet. He he sitting he sitting more in the pocket too much, and he mm-hmm. not he not really moving like he used to. I mean, he still he still crafty and slick, but. He can't sit in that pocket like that with Kovalev. He even did it like in his last three fights. He sat in the pocket. And he was getting hit more than he ever got hit before. But with with the type of power that Kovalev got, he can't he can't afford to sit in that pocket like that. And he got he got to be in and out. And when he get in the inside, he got to actually work. And I don't know if his legs is up under him like that. You know he he not he looking like he real sluggish and heavy at that 175 and how he was moving when he was at 168 he he it's like he at 75 he like a a tad bit slow and he can't afford to be a tad bit slow he got to be all the way on his A game for this fight. Can I, can right. I say something about that? Let me say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think that I think he he's definitely right about that. But see. It's, a lot of times, it's who you fighting to, to to bring you up to that next level. You know, Ward was fighting somebody that he knew he could be, that he knew he just had to train just to look, you know, just to get out there and be a little sharp. And it wasn't nothing that he had to be creative for. But when he fight Kovalev, he know he's going to have to go out here. He know he's going to have to be in the best shape. He know he's going to have to move better. He know he's going to have to do all these things because he's fighting a top-notch fighter. He's fighting a, a fighter that can beat him. So, I think you're gonna see a good war, just like when you saw Ward fight all the other guys at 168 and 160. He did what he had to do because he knew them good guys can fight, and he went out there and showed the world. But against the fighters he just fought, he knew he could beat them guys with just one hand, you know. So it was basically just going ahead, getting some work in, getting some ring rust off, and that's what he did. Yes, sir. If Kovalov, if Kovalov going off of that, he's gonna be in the world of trouble. Yep, I agree. Um, let me get your take hey. on this, Nike man. You're actually in uh you fought the majority of your career at the super welterweight division and you know, the one fifty four mm-hmm. division currently in boxing is probably the most talent deep division in the in the mm-hmm. uh, sport period. Mm-hmm. Um, who are some of your favorite guys coming up in, in that division right now, man? And, and what's your take on this upcoming Jamal Charlo and uh J Rock Williams fight for their for the IDF title? Um, it's probably the most exciting fight at one fifty four we've had quite some time. It's gonna it's gonna be a good fight, you know what I mean? Uh I really can't pick even one I would say Charlo, but you know, it's gonna be a good fight. But what I like is right now I'm liking that welterweight division right now. I'm liking yeah. my man Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? And then I also like Lil Earl Spence. I think them yes, two sir. right there I think them two right there the best two welterweights right now, you know. In boxing, so you know, uh, not not taking nothing away from the other champions, but if you had to rank them two, I think them two are the two fighters that that's going to you know step out of the shadows of all the rest of the fighters and become the elite welterweight champion. And and in the future, them two, if they ever get to fight, that's going to be a hell of a fight. That'll be a big, very big pay per view fight. All right, um, we got another guest that guest caller that like to uh, ask a question. Um, Pennsylvania, you on the line? Yeah, what's up? All right, what's going on, man? You got any questions you'd like to ask either of the champs, man? Darnell Boone and Winky Wright, man. Uh, how you doing? What's up, what's up? Uh, yeah, man, first of all, man, I can say what's up, man, to them guys. Uh, I think Boone is the one that knocked down uh, Ward, right? Yeah, yeah. Knocked him down. And Kovalev. Kovalev as well. Kovalev, too. Oh, she knocked down Kovalev, too? Yeah, 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 both of them. Damn, that's what's up. On uh, uh, Winky, man, there was a little bit of talk, man, that Floyd had uh, ducked you, man. Uh, can you clarify that? 
No, uh, I don't. Just, I don't think Floyd ducked me. I, like I said, I don't. We was in two different weight classes. It wasn't even about me and Floyd. It, that was just. Somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you who ducked me. Oscar De La Hoya ducked me, but no, uh, Floyd didn't duck me. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I can respect that. That's what I said. I was like, yo, you too big for the man. Y'all was always like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just two different weight classes, and we was cool people, so it wasn't even about us fighting. Alright, so what about um, What does Boo think about the Because um, I might have missed that more About the uh, Kovalev war thing, man Who you guys got? I'm going to tell you what I got, man I got uh, Kovalev by knockout Or War by ugly decision I honestly think Ward is going to take it I think he's going to rough Kovalev up Tie him up And just pretty much outbox him Just use a basic rhythm all right, boom. Yeah, let me get you. Uh, you haven't necessarily gone into a prediction on the show yet. Uh, you did give a good breakdown, so let's get your take on that. You got it fifty-fifty, or who you got taking the fight, uh, Darnell? I got, I got uh, Kovalev late stoppage if Ward okay. can't take his power. Okay, so we got you on wax now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Ward can't take his power. You got Ward out boxing him. No, I I don't know. It's just, it's just something that I see in Ward that you know he not he not doing like stuff that he normally used to do. And even even like Wink was saying that um maybe maybe it was the competition. I don't know. I I never took it light on nobody. Well, you know what I'm saying? I, so you don't think you don't think Ward can knock Kovalev out? No. Nah. We don't, we don't punch no, I don't, I don't, punch don't think, I don't think anybody is expecting expecting Ward to knock out yeah, Kovalev. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't it think anybody's expectation. It can be a it can be a twelve round shutout. I mean, we could talk about Ward winning eight to nine rounds, but he ain't gonna knock him out, not at all. And who, but you, the, you, the, you, crazy, you, the crazy thing is, is that is that Kovalev can actually box, and, and everybody gonna actually see his boxing skills that night. Let me say this about. I got one more question for Winky, right? And maybe who can answer this, man? Can you guys explain the business side of making a fight? Like, how does that go down? You know, we like say I want to fight you, man. Right? I'm like, yo, what up, champ? I call you out, call you out, whatever, whatever. What is what is it? You know, that makes it makes it go down. What I'm trying to figure out is. Like you got the Canelo Golovkin situation, they go to the A side, B side, whole thingy. You want? Are you asking me? Well, right, you let's let Winky. Nah, I'll let Winky oh. take it. Uh, go ahead, Winky. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let. We're, we're, we're making a fight like that. It's more than just a fighter saying he wants to take the fight. Both fighters can want to fight, but first of all, if the network don't want to pay the money, then you're not gonna get a fight. If they don't. Get a fight if it's a big fight and they don't do it on pay per view, you won't get the fight. So that's two. That's two. Uh, two things that can stop the fight. Now next, it got to be the the promoters. Sometimes the fighters want to fight each other, but the promoters don't want to chance that fight. You know what I'm saying? They don't want a chance to lose their golden eight, their golden eight. Right. But they like fuck that. We're gonna let everybody say what they want to say, but we not taking that fight because it's too risky. So you know that's what you definitely a lot of components to to the fight game. So, but I mean, where, where's the most money at? Is it selling the fight to the casinos? Is it uh, getting in at the ticket gate? Is it? Uh, I guess pay per view goes hand to hand with both of those. Pay per view, pay per view is it? First of all, you gotta be you gotta be a fan favorite fighter to do pay per view. And, and right. Period. So you can be a fighter that a few people know, but if you ain't a fan favorite people, if people want to see you fight, you ain't gonna do a good pay per view. So now that right there go go without saying, pay per view gonna make you the most money. So you know, once you get the pay per view, the, the casino is going to do it. If, they, if the fight is what the people want to see, the casino is going to give you the money to come to to the casino. And they ain't worried about the ticket sales because they they want people to just come in there and gamble. So they ain't worried about the who, who buy the ticket. All right, so, uh, I want to thank our caller from East Pennsylvania. We got a couple other people calling in right now, man. So <laughs> I, I, I hate to that. cut you off, man, but definitely hey, appreciate you calling in. I'm gonna have to cut all y'all off, man. I gotta get get out of here. It's late. I gotta okay. go. <laughs> definitely, you make this definitely late in the morning, man. So I gotta. I yeah. Gotta go we we've held you on a long time, Wiggy. So I'm definitely glad you could come on, man. Uh, appreciate your time, taking the time out to come on with our uh, and, and talk to us on the show about your career, man. I appreciate y'all having me, man, and I enjoyed myself, man. Good luck, everybody. Oh.
No doubt, okay. Wink, man. I, I'll see you probably at the next fight in the bird, man. All right, big homie. <laughs> see you later, dog. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Have a good one. All right, All right folks. All right, we still got Darnell on, and we got another guest that uh probably has some questions. Uh, guest 15, I'm not sure where you're calling from. You got any questions you'd like to ask Darnell Boone <clears throat> or just any comments you'd like to make in general? Is that me? Yeah, that's you. Oh, oh, no, I was, I was just on. I was just on from East PA. Okay, okay. All right, no problem, man. I'm just listening to the show. All right, no problem, no problem. All right, fellas. Um, with that said, I guess uh, you guys got any more questions like that? Darnell, I know Darnell will be in Vegas for the fight this weekend, man, so I'm definitely looking forward to, to linking up and beating them. Finally, man, we've been chopping it up uh, on Facebook for quite some time, man. You definitely one of the realest brothers out there, you know. Uh, yeah. You, you stay close to, to the fan base of the sport, man, so that's definitely one of the things I, I appreciate about you. you. You grew interactive with us, man, and you always No up, doubt, bro. You keep it real, uh, I, I, I always feel I like it's about y'all, you know what I mean? I got a question for d What's up, man, bro? D- man, have you updated your phone yet, man? I'm glad we made it to a show with you, though, D man. We're gonna talk, man. Yeah. Appreciate you calling me, homie. No doubt, hey, uh, man. <laughs> man All right, know, D, man. So, uh, I go, go ahead, TJ. No, I was just going to tell him, man, this is uh, this is 2K, man, but on Facebook it's EJ, man. I talked to you a, a few times. Um, we had a private message or whatever and whatever, that whole thing that went down in that boxing group, man. So I want to ask you, I was going to get with you anyway. I know your your take on the Kovalev war fight. I'm going to need to argue with you, man, on my show. So I'm going to holler at you a little bit later in a private <laughs> chat, man, try to get you on the show. Hey, we're going to argue. I got to be on that show. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to argue. We're going to argue for about 30 minutes, and I'm going to post that shit on Wax. We're going to put it on YouTube, man, because I think we argued once before about it. Now we're going to argue on Wax. So I'm going to holler at you on a private chat. <laughs> hey, hey, I, hey, now I pay pay per view. I, I would like pay per view rights to that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 uh, uh, you got okay, anything else you, you wanted to ask, TK? Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I just want to uh, let him know. I'll holler at him later. Uh, oh, for man, sure, I, wanted, man. I wanted to ask you a quick question, man. You uh been working a couple of Gennady Golovkin's camps uh recently um over the past year, man. Uh, just give us your take on what it's like being in camp with them, uh, working with him and Abel Sanchez. Oh man, they're great dudes, man. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot that everybody don't see with them guys. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, they see Abel talking junk. You know what I'm saying all the time, but they they don't know really the. the <laughs> The, gen- uh, the genuineness that's in them dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we up there, man, the hospitality is great, man. It, it'll make you not want to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk to you fighting on a, uh, on a car with Gennady. I know uh, Abel definitely speaks very highly of you. Um, I know you're familiar with a lot of other guys in the camp, like uh, Mira Gassiev. Um, has there been any talks of you being on cars or fighting on cars with them in the future? Yeah, well, uh, me and G actually talked about it on um, the last camp I was there for him and Brooke, and he said he said he could, uh, he'd try to get me on. You know what I mean? So, I mean, even if it if it don't happen, you know what I'm saying? I just enjoy just helping them out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't be tripping. All right. Um, I know your main purpose when you go out to Big Bear is to you know to help him with his sparring and get Gennady uh you know good work in in preparation for his fights. Um. Have you been taking any pointers in from Abel himself, or has he been working with you on anything while you're out there uh, working with Gennady? Yeah, man. They, 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 man, they show me stuff all the time, man. Different ways how to throw punches. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing something wrong, you know, Abel will correct it. 
You know what I'm saying? And or if I if I'm landing a good shot, you know, he'll let me know if it's a good shot or not. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's 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 just it's a beautiful atmosphere up there, man. Like them dudes, them dudes, it's like it's like you in the family setting. So like everybody in the gym is like everybody's brothers in that gym. It ain't nobody that's better than this guy. It ain't nobody that's better than that guy. There's no egos. So everybody is just one entity when you up there. Okay. Um, fellas, you got any more questions you'd like to ask Darnell while we got them all? So, uh, no, I'm good. IBO, I appreciate him, Paul. The IBO title, uh, Darnell, who was that against? I know you mentioned that. I can't I, – I'm not looking it up right now. Who was that against? And is it at 168? No, it's actually at 75. Seventy-five. Yeah, uh, oh, we're okay. trying to we're trying to figure out between the two fights because they both the same day, which one I'm gonna take. You know what I'm saying? So okay. if the, if I don't take the tune up or the tune up don't happen, you know the, it's still it's still in the works for the for the IBO one. So it, it'd be against a guy named uh, Umar Salomon or something like that. It'd be yeah. in Russia. Okay. 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 All right, Diesel, man, we want to thank you for coming on, man. It's, it's a pleasure having you on our show. We've been lagging on bringing you on anyway. You know, we had talked about it previously, uh, but definitely glad to have you on, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you this weekend in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Ward and Kovalev fight. For sure, bro. All right, man, you have a good one, man, and we'll stay in touch with you, Darnell. Okay, bro. All right, All right Sam. All right, bro. All right, y'all. We definitely got a good show going on tonight, man. Uh, two great guests. Uh, sure. We still got some topics to cover, man. I don't even think we finished going through the the whole Pedraza Javante Tane Davis fight. Um, no, we didn't. But, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't um, think there's really much more we can say to top all this. <laughs> Um, I guess we'll go ahead and go for a couple of the other and try and make them fast as possible because we still didn't have some interesting topics this week that we need to touch on. You know, we're going to try and keep them brief, though. Um, I'm going to come to you, Bo, on this one. Uh, Mr. Cuba Loca from Figueroa. Um, Babu Shumanov was uh, actually scheduled to take – well, not scheduled, but a first bid was won by Caribe Promotions for him to take on – Junior Dorticos of Cuba. Uh, mm. for no, 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 no. Hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm not tripping on the up. name. Yeah, okay, Man, you want I, me to call him his real name? Cool Ranch Doritos. Doritos. <laughs> cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, but before I let you go in, Bo, I'm going to just say this is just another situation of me being upset with the WBA, man. Um, yep. Yes, sir. You want to yeah. consolidate these titles? Why the fuck do you have an interim titles? Like I'm not taking anything away from Doritos, but um, <laughs> like why are you adding to this confusion? You know, in the process, man, you have two champions. Why the hell do you need an interim? With that said, man, go ahead, Bo, take it, man. Hey, man, you got one more time. One more time. To fuck with my boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm upset as well with this about the WBA. Listen, they they claim they want to consolidate titles. They claim that they – and they're the only ones. Like, if you look at the ranking system, they're the only ones that got this interim silver, intercontinental, you know, uh, 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 intercontinental, uh, you know, Key West, Texas, Part 1, whatever <laughs> the fuck these titles getting that. Dude, they are killing me with this. And it's nothing more than to get sanctioning fees and all of that. But outside of that, you know, Shumanov, and uh, I've been talking to, um, yeah, yeah, that's me, motherfucker. I've been talking to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading to me. Y'all are motherfuckers when y'all be sending me messages. I'm going to send y'all right now on blast. <laughs> <laughs> you over here, you over here interrupting, interrupting comments to, to refer to Facebook messages, man. Well, what's that all about? But, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been talking to Cuban 305 and, uh, and Boxing Cubano, 
they down there in camp with him, and apparently Shuvanov and them kind of don't want no part of this fight. Uh, they had to reissue this fight a second time because it looked like Shuvanov and them kind of don't want it. Kirby wanted promotions. Now they're trying to, um, you know, they now they're trying to renege. So we don't even know if this fight is going to even take place. Well, so, Shuvanov has actually been wanting to get the love of that fight, so that's his issue. He's like, why the fuck yeah. do I need to fight the interim when I am already should be fighting love of who's been fighting right. We already know about him. In the right, but, he, but, but, I mean, you got to take this fight. Whether you like it or not, you got to take this fight. He, either he got to take this fight or just say, you know, forget it, drop the belt, and then go. Then go yeah, and that, that, that's just something I don't understand about the WBA. You got the interim. You got two champions mm-hmm. fighting in the eliminator. What mm-hmm. kind of nope. bullshit is that as opposed to just having a one and two? You know, in the, in the exactly. range. The WBA exactly. has been confused yeah. about what they want to do forever. I mean, look at the situation with Luis Ortiz. Okay, you exactly. stripped him. You stripped that him. Okay, and he's the interim interim belt. Inter- and he's the WBA Intercontinental Title, by the way, after getting stripped of his interim. Like, yeah, right. right. They, 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 strip him, they strip him of one minor title and give him another one. What kind of other minor title is that? Then Come on, on top man. of then on top of that. Uh, and I and, and I think it was two K member the guy boxing. You normally when you have somebody fight for a vacant belt, you take number one contender, one number two, two contender. The motherfucker yep. said, okay, we're gonna take number one. Uh, no, nah, we don't like two, or we're gonna look at seven. Oh, the, the whole Shannon Briggs, yeah, right. The Shannon Briggs, Luke Brown. Whoa, whoa, hold up, Shannon, Shannon Briggs Brown. The motherfucker said we're gonna take number three and number five. That's what five, they did right, there. Yep. Yeah, so they they didn't even I look for Lewis Ortiz. I wonder if Shannon was lower than number five. He, damn, he's that high? Damn. Yeah, Briggs no. is five. Briggs is, is five. five? Luke, Lucas okay. Brown is three. Yes, sir. You know what? I, I think he And then, then on top of that, the winner of that has to face, they have 120 days to look to face um, the number six contender. I don't know who he is. Shut up, 2K. Do not tell me. Be quiet. <laughs> I do not need to know who the number six contender is, 2K. Thank you very much, bro. Number two, Vladimir so, uh, Klitschko. No, no, I said the winner of Bronny and Briggs got to face, they got 120 oh. days to face the, face the number six contender. That's and right. I don't That's do not that need, I, 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 I don't need to know. I do not need to know who that is. That's your boy. Wow. Oh, so my God, Jay. Go ahead. 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 It's ridiculous what's going on. So, man, it's I mean, amazing. It's actually hurting their credibility. Because, I mean, right now, think about this. And, and a lot of heavyweight division, you got Nathan Cleverly, who just be Braymore. You got Nathan <laughs> Cleverly out there, you know, making his chops, waiting to see if he's going to get the window of Ward Kovalev. No. Ew. No, no, no. Don't make that fight. That's easy. That's easy work. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I want to see. Pretty- I want to see Adonis Stevenson fight the winner of War Kovalev, not Nate. Oh, well, you know, well, you know, that, that, that are, well, you know, hold on, hold on. Know, that that Adonis 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 be, better be. Oh, wow. <laughs> Adonis better be. Adonis he, he, he's Stevenson. close. Um, what did you say, Juan? Yeah, that or uh, Arthur better be of. Um, I'd like to see him. I, I think he's a couple fights away. You know, he's been injured. You know, um, so he hasn't been as active. But I'd like to see yeah. him go against one of those guys. Like sometime this uh, 2017, um, we gonna take it into an- another one of our topics, man. That's a pretty hot one. Um, Got to go into it. Uh, Bermain Stavern fails drug test this week. Um, you know, as you know, he, him, and Alexander Popkin were uh, going to fight each other in a title eliminator, eliminator for the WBC heavyweight title. Um, it's looking like the fight is still on. Poppy can still want to keep it on despite the uh the, the drug test uh fail by Stavern. Man, uh let me go and go with Bo on this one, man. Starting off, what's your take on this Stavern, what this means for his career and the implications it has for this fight, even though they're saying the fight is still on, what does it mean for like the actual title or the title eliminator itself? Well, first of all, Stavern said uh, that I think it was uh, something about he drunk, a, a, I think, a monster. I was watching some interview he was doing. He drunk the monster. But the, what I want people to understand is I'm going to make this short. 
that this isn't exactly a PED to enhance and to give them an advantage. The reason why it's on the list is because it's harmful with the side effects. It's harmful, it's harmful to the user of it. So it's not something that's going to give him an advantage. There's something that's harmful to him, according to what they put out. If you read, if people read the whole article about what they put out, DMAA. I don't even want to fuck up the name. So that's the first thing you have to look at. Secondly, this isn't the same thing as Provecan because they have enough time to and, and preparation to dish out the punishment and still have this fight continue to go on because the fight will take place in December. And I like it mm-hmm. eight days before the fight. And they've already said that that the Vernon is going to have to pay a fine and pay for his medical testing as well as well as do community service. That that is, was that's is, part so of that is program. The, is the de- is the title eliminator still part of the fight though, or is that the title all... eliminator is still part of the fight? Okay. All right. Um, um, let me get a Bo. I mean Bernard's take on this one, man. Uh, as far as what this means, I guess Bo gave a good analysis of what it means. The fight is still on. The title eliminator is still on. Um, do you think this does any harm for Stavern going into the fight as far as his preparation for it? Uh, no, it does. Uh, he could still continue to train. He just got to watch what he takes inside his body. Now, what Bo just said about him doing community service or something he drank, how does – I don't know how this works out. Well, Nevada uh, or Nevada, whoever, how do you get somebody community service for something they drink. Like, it's not, it's not on trial. Now, I did read also in the article that he will get a $75,000 fine for what he took in. I could understand that. But <coughs> anything else, I don't I don't pretty much see it. It's not a punch, man. Like, he was taking, again, he wasn't taking the drugs to enhance himself to get himself against a vacuum. He just had something to drink. In fact, he was looking for something after he works out so he won't feel drained. So, at the end of the with the, with the situation, well, what about got water, water, motherfucker? But no, uh... <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you don't work out, if you don't work out, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I guess he was talking about energy, energy. <laughs> I'm done, man. That just fucked me all up, dog. <laughs> you quench your thirst. You know what I'm saying? No. He was so about to bring his energy level, but never mind. <laughs> man, uh, uh, yeah, we, that's what I guess we're going to call that Call that a wrap on that one, man. Uh, fight's still on. Uh, we keep our eye out on this one to see if there's any there's any kind of postponement on the date or if there's anything, if he has to pass a drug test, any kind of stipulations. We're still waiting on some things to be handled uh, on the WBC side and with the testing. So, you know, um, I don't even think they've had the, the, the B sample come back, have they? Okay, thank you for answering my question, y'all. Um, <laughs> I thought that was somebody that, was saying that. Man, you can't to get a comment in. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping yeah, I somebody was just going to chime in and say, yeah, you know, that the B sample was take, uh, was tested too, or, you know, but um, that's something yeah, I, I haven't know. seen for myself. If Always. the B sample was even tested, I've only heard about this one fill. I haven't heard about the other sample. You know, they usually test two samples with these things, and it takes a couple days. Yeah. So Only thing we'll I heard was there. that they've, they've, they've concluded it's a trace amount, so that, and they don't really give a fuck. It, so long. Yeah, That's they all say it's, pre, it's pretty so. small. Like, it's nothing major, but they said the same shit about public and, you know, with his situation. But, you know, you got a uh, old girl in tennis that got suspended for a fucking year for taking the same shit, but it's minimal. So I don't know what the hell that means anymore with these testing agencies. Um, We got another good announcement uh, this weekend, a fight that a lot of us really want to see. Um, Kel Brook announced that he's staying in the 147 weight pound class, the welterweight division. Um, I think uh, the majority of this is uh, financially based. Um. But with that said, he, it looks like he will be fighting Errol Spence. You know, that's his mandatory IBF defense. But he did say some things to preface his comment about staying or about fighting Errol Spence. If we can't get Pacquiao, then we'll go for Spence. So he's looking for paper 
at 147 as opposed to really fighting Spence first as a first option. So let me just put that and go on the record with saying that, y'all. Um, 2K, man, drop some, drop some knowledge on us. Well, what, what you, what's your thoughts on this? Well, I don't know if it's uh, financially or not. I mean, because, you know, he was trying to get the Canelo fight. I, I would side more with the fact that at 154 he would get his ass drugged. There's too much competition at 154, a weight class that he's not really in, never fought at. So, um, exactly. That's what I'm saying. 147 is more financially lucrative because the Pacquiao mentioning, the Amir Khan, you know what I'm saying, at 147. Pacquiao's not Oh, well, we we know that's not happening, but that's just something (laughs) he's. And we know the Khan fight is not going to happen because Khan ain't trying to fight. I think. I think but that, that, that that's fight. pretty much the 154. I mean, his only option he really wanted at that fight was Canelo. You know what I'm saying? But you I see, even the, the 147 uh, fight with Spence, you know, they're talking about the 75-25 per split. So it's about money with that. You know, they don't have any intention of fair negotiating with Spence. They want the per split, the per split. So you're, so. So you're, saying, you're saying Errol Spence is more money than Canelo. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I, I'm saying if he could, yeah, if he could get the Canelo fight, he'll take that. You know, I think, but I think he was talking financial. about one. Okay, but you don't think him staying at 147 was in terms of financial because of him mentioning no, Pacquiao I think and No, I think it's in terms of competition. He has a better chance at 147 than he does at 154. Absolutely, like That's 154, he'll take about five losses. He'll, he'll lose. Pretty interesting. Uh, he'll, he lose about five dudes at 154, whereas at 147, there's probably no real determination of who he will lose to. Even Errol Spence, that's still not a determination, even though I do have Errol Spence in that fight. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I think the competition is different at 154. But, um, yeah, if he's, if he's serious about this, yeah, like you said, this is the fight we've always wanted, you know what I'm saying, So uh, that, we, that we've all been wanting at least recently. So if he's really serious, he's not just talking shit. He's actually gonna fight Errol Spence. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's, shit, I'm geared for that. Um, hopefully, moving from 160 to 147, um, and his next fight is not gonna fuck up his his physique and uh, his stamina and his durability. Um, hopefully, he can get back to form. You know, the the Kell Brook he was at 147 before he made that move, um, and it'll be more of an intriguing fight if not. Man, Earl Spence is gonna make easy work of him, man. If he's if he's gonna have uh, physique problems and stamina issues, man. So All I'm right. happy for him, man. I'm glad he's staying. Definitely interesting perspective there uh, that you put out there. That it was competition based. That's the first argument I've heard about that one. So good one, two K. So let me get your take on it, man. <laughs> uh, what did what does this announcement mean? Uh, what is it indicative of uh, as far as him? Fighting at 147, what do you think his intentions really are? Uh, right now, he, he just um, he. I think this is him putting fillers out there to see who bites. Um, he said Pacquiao, but I think we talked about this. If he fights with <clears throat> Pacquiao, it won't be for a unification fight because the IBF believes you better. You got to face your mandatory. But they might do him like they did Tyson Fury if he tries to fight nope. Pacquiao. Okay. <clears throat> um, I also believe, in like what 2K said, because at 154, you got J-Rock, you got both the Charlo brothers, you got... Um, Arizona De Lara. You got Heard, where you got the number one top guy, Arizona De Lara. Uh, and Demetrius right Andre. There, and, right, oh, Demetrius <laughs> Andre, you know, Ronald Monroe. Boom, boom. So, yeah, and, and about five dudes. Dudes. I ain't we calling no dudes. grown man no goddamn boo boo. We talking uh, we talking dudes six feet six feet one that you know six feet six feet one that'll rehydrate well over uh, hundred and sixty pounds come fight night. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably you know big, actually, probably bigger that. than Gennady. And yeah, right. Yeah. Agreed. So I I agree with two K. If he's going to fight at 154, he's looking at Carnello. He wants to throw 147 was the logical move for him because even, even if he was to stay at 160, I mean, can we look at any of these guys at 160 and, and say that he would have a, a, a better chance at 160? Maybe a few, but not that many. So, and there's no, man, no money outside of Golovkin. So like right, I said, a lot of this is financially driven. Right. He could fight Pacquiao. He could fight Bradley, get some money, okay, uh, maybe even look at the win unifying with the winner of Thurman and, 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 and Garcia. 
Uh, but before all that has to happen, he has to go through Earl Smith. Uh, Earl Spence. That's why I say this is. I think he's putting out fillers right now to see what bites, and we'll find out coming up because February twenty fourth, he has to. That's when he has to properly inform the medical board what his intentions are, or what yeah. he's going to do as far as taking the mandatory or doing something else. So all right. Cause just from his comments, it makes it seem like Errol Spence is in his first option at 147. You know, it seems like he wants to take I the money by that. I because I would like to see Earl beat the That's man to win the title. That's his fucking he's, mandatory. Yeah, he's mandatory, but it, it's just, <laughs> just the wording, you know what I'm saying? The way you say certain yeah. things, it, it definitely yeah. comes out like you're, you have other intentions. Um, okay. So we, we went in on a, a couple of work. Fight, you know. Uh, let me get a quick prediction on uh, just on the fight from the fellas, man. Who you got winning, Ward or Kovalev? You know, we're not gonna go into details since we talked about it with the with the other guys that were guests on today. Um, just a quick prediction, Ward or Kovalev. Uh, I'm starting off with Bernard. Who you got winning the fight? Uh, you'll be out there this weekend. China, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, who, you sir. Got, who you got taking it? You know what? I can see this fight being going to Ward by split decision. Interesting. Okay. Um, Bo, prediction? Uh, if Kovalev don't if Kovalev don't come out and try to enforce his will, Andre Ward, unanimous decision. Okay. So is that that's your final prediction? No, not the going with the if and but statement. You know what I'm saying? You gotta Hey man, hey man, pass there. the mic to two K and be quiet. <laughs> Hey, I'll put like this. I'll put like this. Whatever 2K says, I'm putting my money on at Vegas. I'm still going to All right. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, hey, that's not a bad idea because that nigga be making good bets. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. he is a gambling-ass motherfucker. Yeah, I know yeah. He, he, he do that shit for hey, real. Yeah. I got, I got money ready for the ready, boy. That's on shoes. Look, who you got that your number five, by the way? Yeah, yeah okay. I got my money. You got it ready, Jack. <laughs> um, I'm I'm standing firm on Andre Ward, one sixteen, one twelve, possibly one seventeen, one eleven. I think this fight could look just like uh, Crawford Postal. Okay, good call, good call. And you know, uh, trying to divine, make it official, man. We unanimous on this one. Uh, S O G Ward, you know, what I'm saying beating Mother Russia uh, on Saturday night. Um, with that said, we just gonna talk about. Well, we're not going to go into detail. We're going to talk about the other cards on the fight, though. Uh, we got Isaac Chalimba against Alexander Gavazic for the mm. NABF light heavyweight title. That's actually going to be a good fight. Um, Gavazic uh, is a nice up-and-comer um, at light heavyweight. He's only 11 and 0, but dude, dude is nice um, from what I've seen of him. Chalimba's always a game dude, so we're not going to go into detail about these fights. But that's an interesting fight. We got Mighty Mo Hooker. Fighting for a WBL, yeah. NABL super lightweight title. Um, I definitely like this guy as a prospect. Real rangy guy at 140. Um, he sparred with Terrence Crawford and prepared with him. Um, he brings some in- interesting things to the game as far as his height and reach and power at that. Uh, you know, I guess he's probably a, a cleaner version of a mirror mom, and that's at this stage of his career. Um, yeah, he, he's a cleaner version of a mirror mom, better defense defensively, but, you know, uh, probably a little more ranger even, I would say. Um, he's, a, he's a big dude at 140. Um, we got Curtis Stevens fighting James De La Rosa for another, uh, yeah, another regional title at state, WBA. Continental Americas. These motherfuckers at the WBA, I, man. Uh, oh. Hold on, wait a minute. I got to say something. Is it me or have y'all heard of Twami coming out of his skin every time whenever he talks about the WBA? <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it's very frustrating, man. Uh, it, it's been like the, about the last month of our shows. We've had a lot of shit dealing with the WBA. Like, they can't get their shit together. But, um, oh. anyways, um, we also got our girl Clarissa Shields, man, two time uh, gold medalist. Uh, women's boxer making her debut. I think they did her dirty, starting her out as the first uh, 
fight on the card. She definitely is uh, deserves better than that. She should be on the televised portion. I um, agree. But big up to her. Good luck, and uh, we definitely uh, will be paying attention to her prospects as a pro, man. So everybody be looking out for that War Kovalev pay-per-view card. Fight of the year. Uh, yeah, our, at least for most of us, you know, even though some of us think it's not going to turn out uh, as competitive as we were thinking. Um, with that said, I'm going to go into our UO ENO segment for the week. Um, on this day, we had um, – let me see. On this day, we had Paul De Ayala losing to Eric Morales um, in 2002 oh, um, with the win. Eric Morales, yeah, definitely a good one, man. Eric Morales won the WBC uh, vacant featherweight title, man. So that was definitely a good fight, man. Paul De Ayala, Ayala yeah. was a good dude. Definitely a hell of a fighter, man. You, we already know Eric Morales is probably your first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, so big up to both of those guys, man. Um I guess I'll put it up for grabs. We want to do the final blow this week, man. Uh, Bernard, you know, filled in for me last week. I got it down. All right, go ahead, man. I just, you know, um, I'll keep it short, and if somebody else wants to say something, they can't. I just want to say that this year in boxing, um, I want to pay pay recognition to two fighters that meant meant something to me, and that is Muhammad Ali, who passed away this year, and Andrew Pryor, who also passed away this year. Uh, I, I grew up. I was born during the Ali time. I didn't get a chance to see it. Like most people, I learned more about Ali when he was out of boxing. Oh, um, Bo Daddy K. Say hey, what's that? Oh, Bo Daddy K. He said he was born during the, Dem- the, Jack, the Jack Dempsey time. That <laughs> man was born during the Jack Dempsey time. And shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could have cut your final blow off. I had to get that one in, man. <laughs> He, he, he said he said it, man. He set himself up for that shit. I wasn't going to turn it down, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, go ahead, man. Go ahead, bro. I learned um, I, I, I learned to appreciate Muhammad Ali more for what he did outside of Boston. The Empire uh, was one of the guys I looked up to because Aaron Empire represented the hood to me. Aaron Empire was a great man. He was good. He would just come out and he would fight. And he wasn't ashamed of being from the hood and letting me know he was from the hood and talking like that and, you know, and all of that. And he represented that to us going up in the gym. And that's who I looked up to. And, uh, you know, to lose both Aaron Pryor and Muhammad Ali this year, I just think, you know, you know boxing, uh, it, them two guys remind us how great the sport was back then in, in its time and why it means so much and why it's so special. And that's all I wanted to say. That, that's all I wanted to say to our listeners out there and to the ignorant motherfuckers on here I'm with. I appreciate y'all giving me the call. <laughs> <laughs> y'all y'all, y'all got anything you, you want to chime in? <laughs> y'all got anything you want to chime in uh, on his uh, final, on Bo's final blow? Um, yeah, I just want to say yeah, big up on the, on, go ahead, go ahead, Bernard. No, 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 you speak, you speak, you speak, you speak for you, come on. Oh, uh, man, I just want to say big up on a shout out, man, um, on, on to those two historical legends, man, um, it's a good thing to pinpoint those guys. Hopefully the younger generation and the current era will look after those those uh, models and examples, man, so we could get, at least in this country, the sport back on that level, you know, to what it was, yeah. and its popularity, you know, during that era, you know what I'm saying, just in this country, because, you know, everywhere else, I think boxing is booming. So I don't have a problem with boxing as a whole. I think the landscape is just fucked up here in the States. Go ahead, Bernard. Um, on that note, on a real serious note here, fuck the casuals this Saturday night. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, my God. He, he, he always going personal. Personal. I heard that, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. Um, especially Clarissa Shields for some reason. I don't know why I'm so excited about her going pro. I think it's going to be um, some good things. That's for great. Boxing. I think yeah. it's great for women's pro boxing. And, you know, uh, only more to come, you know. Uh, that said, I also want to give a big thanks to, you know, both of our guests tonight, you know, Darnell Diesel Boogie Boom, you know what I'm saying, uh, from Facebook. We all chop it up with them on there. Uh, big up to Bo to bring your winky right on for us. Man, big up. That oh, was man, that was a big group effort, man. That wasn't, that uh, wasn't me. That, that was a group effort, man. Yeah, um, it definitely was an uh, honor to talk to another future Hall of Famer, you know, 
uh, was unified champ at 154 for for you guys that don't really know him. Uh, fought some legendary fights, you know. Um, he he took he he's actually a good example. Of somebody that took the hard road coming up, man, and that's why I'm glad we had him on because some of these young fighters need to look at the mm-hmm. actual shit he went through to get the fights and the money. You know, uh, like you know, he mentioned during the, the the segment, he had to fight overseas for years away from home. Nobody would fight him. He was IBF world title was fighting overseas because so nobody would fight him over here in the states. So. You know, just big up to having both of those guys come on today and, you know, uh, break bread with us and show love, man. With that said, uh, for my co-host, 2K the God of the Guys of Boxing Talk, uh, we got Don Bernard of the Truth of Facts About Boxing, um, our boy Big Cool from Colossal Boxing Talk that join us today. Um, and with that said, we still holding it down for you, boy. Um, and together, we are the movement, man. Uh, see you all next episode.